We're going live, Dan. Going live, Mick. We're going live. We're live. I think we're live. I think we're live. But we need... You pressed the big red button. I'm pressing it now. Oh, very good. <laughs> so I think we're on air. What a lucky button. I do believe we are on air. Brilliant. S stream help Let's go with that. Stream help is excellent, apparently. Fantastic. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome to That Pella Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Uh, please let us know that you can hear us and see us adequately. Um, uh, as you will know, I am loving band meme 666's... Uh, continuing awesome memes on the live stream subject subject where the first five minutes of any live stream is can you hear us can you see us <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, very good yeah any comments coming in dan right uh let's see let's see um yes on air uh someone says dan's very quiet all good hello dudes dan's very quiet let's, make, let's make dan louder then okay How's um, that? is dan is dan loud enough now Looks and stuff. Someone says it's perfect. It's good. Loud and clear. Okay. There we go. That, yeah. No, someone says Dan's a bit quiet. Anyway. Well, if Dan if Dan remains quiet, please let us know. Um, yeah, Dan might be a touch quiet. There's a few people saying Dan's a bit quiet. Dan's quiet. Okay. Well, let's make Dan louder. I've got the tech to do this, Dan. Do you? Is it within your reach? It's like, is, Dan, is Dan loud enough now? Looks and stuff. Someone says it's perfect. It's good. Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, there we go. That was weird. Yeah. Hey, where am I? Dan's a bit quiet. Anyway, I'm, I'm coming out of somewhere. Let's stop that. You are. Do you want to see? Do you want to see something utterly amazing? Everybody, yeah. everyone, ready for something amazing? Check Here this out. Go. Oh Brace my god! Yourselves. Oh my god! There he is. I, I haven't seen it yet. When, I'm, I'm how, playing how, catch up. How quick's your um, delay? How slow's your delay? We'll see. It's running at about uh, 10, 15 seconds. Yeah. You soon you'll see. Oh come on. It's pretty, I haven't seen the awesomeness yet. It's pretty spectacular, Dan, if I'm honest. Okay. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing it, Mick. I really do. Gnome I genuinely singing. do. Gnome singing? Uh, uh, well, nothing yet. Really? I'm still waiting to see this awesome... Oh, 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 oh. Far out, man. I'm so... Right, Tom Bukovac. That's not me. No. All right, here we go. Uh... Yeah, okay, so it's still not working. There you go, try that. Okay. That's better. Well, that's interesting. The keys have switched around. Yeah. They'll do that. Anyway, sorry, the, all, all of this. What The reason that you're about, the, the, the people watching live can now see, but you ha can't see yet, Dan, is no. when we did Friday's show, um, everyone said it was so much better seeing Dan uh, full screen rather than on a... <laughs> Check it out! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy rather well, than on a computer shot. screen there so um i've made that happen unfortunately we can't do the, the brilliant audio thing because uh what you saw on friday took a lot of editing this doesn't take any editing but at least we've got him big big on the screen now and uh back to me or oh, back to us and back to you should i say okay uh Rob, do you not have a separate do you do you have a separate shot of you that's just you no it's too complex Oh, okay. I could. I could have set up a nut yet another camera, but you know what, Dan? You know what? That's a nice I, mug. I know what. Hey, Dan, that's a really nice mug you've got there. It's a really splendid mug. Yeah, it's so nice. Just imagine if they were available from that Pedal Show store. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? I, I Not love least. this. It's a, it's a spring reverb tank. Yeah. And then at the end of the springs, it has that pedal show written in springs. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> you can also get that on a t-shirt uh, from thatpedalshowstore.com. Well, I thought I had one on, but I looked up and no, I don't. Yeah, let's turn this brightness down a bit. Right. right. Um, okay then, so roll call. First off, BV Ninja, thank you so much as always for moderating. Yeah, thanks, BV. Today. Legend, superstar. Um, <laughs> Greg Pivilant, let's let's Pilivant. Greg Pilivant, let's get straight into a question before we do the roll call. Um, although 
uh, Woden of the Angels says good evening from Suffolk, England. Hello, Suffolk. Um, uh, Greg Pillivant says, here's a question for the chat then. What's a good reverb or delay that would match the orange colour of the DNM drive and the Walrus Audio Monument tremolo? So we need a reverb uh, or delay that's isn't orange. There, what's, what's Mr. Moto? What colour is that? Yeah, there you go. Well, that's, that's a reverb and a tremolo. Uh, that'll, yeah, that'll do. So good what reverb. What we're asking is, what orange pedals do we know of? Where is the Mr. Moto? Here it is. In the, in the colour wheel, what's the opposite of orange? Oh, hang on, you're still full screen, mate. Um, uh, I would need to call up a colour wheel to see that. I don't actually okay. know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's probably bluey, bluey, greeny, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. J Rocket Audio Mr. Moto, which is a reverb and tremolo, which is really cool, is orange. Um, although it sounds like we could be into red as well, because the Walrus Audio Monument is sort of ready orange, isn't it? Oh, okay. So uh, what crimson. Have we got burst amber. Yeah. Or just don't worry about it and get the Source Audio Collider. <laughs> and paint it red. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the white, the white whale's red, isn't it? It is. That is also a reverb and tremolo. White whale from Crazy Tube Circuits. That's a corker. Um, Delay Llama, is that red? No, that's white. Oh no, oh, it might be red. The, the, the Dalai Lama stream is white. I think that, yes, I think you might be correct. The, reg, the regular one, or it might be black, I can't remember. Anyway, okay, hope that helps. Um, let's move Michael on. Michael Four says, here's a few for the beer fund. Stay safe. Thanks, Michael. Cheers, mate. Michael Fours, that was, was it? Yeah. Um, Chris Warburton says, some TPS to perk me up before my mum's funeral tomorrow. Well, Chris, we're really sorry oh, to hear man. that. Oh, man. Hope it can be as good as it can possibly be. Uh, yeah, we, uh, our feelings are with you, mate. Our feelings are with you, especially Sorry during these that. times, but at any time, of course. Um, who have we got on then? Uh, Phil Sherry uh, says uh, has done a super chat, but he says, lads, only forgot to type the message, didn't I? So hopefully, Phil, you're going to type your message. G Barge, hello to all from Northern California. Hi, G. Um, hello from Tel Aviv, says Jonathan Lebovich. Have Tel you ever been? No, Tel Aviv, no. I'd love to go. Yeah, no, I haven't. I've never been to that part of the world at all, actually. No, I'd love to go there. Um, it's amazing. Actually, I have been to the Sinai Peninsula. <laughs> this is really cool, Mick. Uh, Jeremiah McCann says... If Catherine Fraser and Simon were pedals, what would they be? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, let's start that. What would you be if you were a pedal? Me? Yeah. Boy. Um, a treble booster. Really annoying in every other circumstance except for one. Yeah. When I make sense. Yeah. But apart from that, Put me in any other situation, and I'm just a bit, a bit annoying. <laughs> awesome. I'd be a Boss ME5. Um, <laughs> out, outdated multi-effects that's sort of multi-talentless. <laughs> you know, can, do, can probably turn his hand to pretty much anything slightly badly. Yeah, Boss ME5 for me. Catherine would be... Um, Literally every pedal in the world in pure analogue through hole. Gloriousness. All in one. Yeah. That's what Catherine would be. Yeah. Um, Simon uh, would be... Simon? Yes. Well, I thought Simon would be. Simon would probably be um, an atom, putting it all together. Oh, nice. I Making like that. Making it work. Yeah, yeah. And Fraser would be... The Spaceman effects, um, 
oh, what's the one that has all the CC voltage output mixing stuff? Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know. I see that as Fraser. Yeah. Hey, what a great question. <laughs> I reckon the people have had enough of my head on close-up. No, I, I like it, Dan. I think it's pretty good. Oh, do you? Yeah. Do you? Oh, yeah. Fair enough. What I'll try to do, you know, because we're always about constant evolution here at TPS, but not too quickly, you understand. Um, <laughs> uh, we're sort of in the... Uh, what, are, what are we in? The, the, give me some... Give me some Give me some ages, Dan. Uh, we're in the... Oh, uh, we're in the um, Mesolithic. Okay. Is there primordial ooze at that point? Uh, no, primordial ooze. What's <laughs> primordial ooze? That is the... Um... Oh, it's a really good question. I should know this. Yeah, we're past that. I find all that stuff fascinating. We're sort of as the little floppy fish thing. Precambrian. Pulls, pulls itself out of the sea. They just head out and goes... This could be good, but yeah. not today. It's like, and pops back in. Air. Wow, <laughs> air. I think I can do this. Anyway, in the spirit of... Um, <laughs> in the spirit of evolving, uh, I will try and get a close-up camera on me next week as well. <laughs> it's all good oh, practice. How's good your practice. week been, Mick? Um, yeah, all right. Uh... How was your actually no? It's Monday. How was your weekend? Let's go with that. Uh, yeah, it was okay. We, um, so, uh, for those of you watching wherever you are in the world, if you don't know, the UK has entered another full lockdown. Uh, unfortunately, COVID is worse here than it's been at any point yet. The death toll yeah. is the highest that it's been, and the hospital admissions is high, and the infection rate is very very high. Um, now. I think, well, it doesn't matter. I won't. The government let up for Christmas and said, yeah, sure, go and see people for Christmas, no worries. Um, and I think we're probably feeling the, partially feeling the effects of that. Yeah. Um, so we're, so the, the, the point is that we're back into a full lockdown. So Dan is uh, very kindly asking how the weekend was. It's all right, you know, um, I'm, I think we're just bored. Right. And it's tough, isn't it? Because you've got plenty to do. You know, we're, we're extremely lucky, uh, all of us, because A, no one in our immediate circle has COVID. Mm. So that's great. We can still work. So that's great. We live in a part of the world where it's easy to go outside and not see anybody. So that's great. So we didn't, really nothing to complain about. But of course, everything is relative because our normal lives are we just do a lot all the time and we're doing nothing. Yeah. I, try, I, I think I said to you, I tried to play guitar at the weekend. I picked it up for 10 minutes. I'm like, that. Nah. Just, Not just, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. So anyway, without, I don't wish to be uh, a downer because so many other people are in just far worse situations. So our feelings are with you guys. Um, on the upside, we did lots of walks with Rosie. We did lots of training. Mm -hmm. um, made homemade pizza. If you don't have an uni pizza, mini pizza oven, portable pizza oven, oh my God. <laughs> this thing it does up, look fantastic it, actually it feeds up it heats up to 500 degrees c has a stone in the bottom and flame that comes over the top and it just makes like you know make your own dough and everything it makes like proper pizza mm. and i'm not talking no you know papa john's thick <laughs> crust burger stuffed I ain't talking no Papa John's. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about proper Neapolitan, proper Italian, thin thin and crispy base, minimal topping right. pizza. It's spectacular. We were in Sicily with some friends of ours a uh, year before last, and the house had a proper pizza oven in it. And uh, we had a, uh, a guy there who lit the, the oven... And it takes a long time to get up to heat, but I tell you what, there's nothing quite like the theatre of it. Yeah. And uh, so I got some great footage of Zach helping this Italian chef, and he only spoke Italian, and uh, he's giving Zach instructions. It was just beautiful, um, and it was just the most magnificent night. Oh, and, you know, awesome. everyone's just making their own pizzas. It's fun. It takes, like, what, under a minute. 
Yeah, the, the uni like takes... Seconds. If, you, if you don't turn it within about 30 seconds, it's burnt to a crisp on the back. So yeah, you right. need to put it in and about thir- about a minute, yeah, and you just get this amazing uni, double O-N-I, uh, is, yeah, the, is the brand. Yeah. Anyway, how was your weekend, mate? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I um, I don't know about the rest of you. I don't, is anyone else struggling for motivation? Mm. Um, normally when we're in and we're filming and, and uh, you know, we're just living life, I... I'm the most motivated. Well, I certainly don't struggle with motivation, but this has really uh, left my motivation wanting. Yeah. So I got up early on Sunday, and I had I was I was really enthusiastic. I got up, played some guitar for about an hour. So right, for the rest of the day, I'm going to get the, the new pedal board done. Um, and I got about ten percent the way through it. Just went, that's it. I will need to leave the rest for next week. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, you know, I feel much better today. Um, it's all It's gotten really cold here in the UK as well, and I don't do well in the cold. Yeah. So trying to – and I've got to get out for, for walks every day to try and, you know, just keep the blood flowing. I'm still – I've got a personal trainer uh, online who I'm training with a few times a week, which has been really good because I can't do jiu-jitsu, obviously, for, for obvious reasons. So that's been really good, but I've got to get outside and walk yeah. for a bit every day. Yeah. Um, and I, if I don't do that, I really, really struggle. It is tough, isn't it? It is. Uh, we're luckily getting the dog has transformed that. So yeah, you know, yeah, you have, right. to go out, have to go out every morning, and it's great. Um, bit of exercise. Uh, I've also given up drinking. Uh, certainly for January, maybe a bit more than that, but definitely for January, and uh, mm. I'm losing weight. I mean, it's just. It's falling off yeah. You. Well, I don't know about falling off, but you're a former of your shadow self. Two two short walks a day and uh, no drinking. Blimey, what a difference. Yeah, man. Totally. Anyway, all uh, of this ben, we we Ben hope... Keen says, Thanks for everything you do, guys. I bought a blonde Zilla one by twelve cream back at auction. It might be mixed old one. Um I think you've used up all the right notes in it. Uh Blonde Zilla Cab. Yeah, one by twelve cream back blondezilla. I really hope it's not one of mine because one of them's there, and yeah. I lent the other one to a friend of mine, Ollie. <laughs> so I hope he hasn't sold it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, uh, is it, if it's a Dumble Star one, I know that um, Paul did make some after that. Mm. I think he they took some orders for them. Um, yeah, cool cab actually, cool cab. Uh, right, we better catch up, Dan. So we hope, yeah. sorry, here's me and Dan having a chat between ourselves. We're here for you guys. Um, we hope you've had uh, a decent week, as decent as it can be. Uh, craziness across the globe. <laughs> I think we should probably just move on and uh, yeah. be nice to one another and uh, think about guitar tones. That's probably the best way forward at this point. <laughs> on the subject Hopefully. of which, uh, as we're, thanks for all your suggestions, by the way. Um, the show on Friday was sort of a compilation show because we had to do we had to get something together quickly because our lockdown was just announced like that and obviously Dan and I can't be in the same place to film. Um, and then we've had quite a lot of nice suggestions in for stuff that we could do. Um, still don't know what we're going to do this week, but we'll work something out. It may well be another compilation type show. There's two in the can. One is our favourite products of last year, and indeed our favourite products. They might not necessarily be from last year, but ones we discovered last year, and also. The things we said we'd do in 2020, did we or did we not? That's going to be an interesting show. Yeah, I've actually, I've written up my, not a script as such. Yeah, I've got mine. Yeah, okay, let's do that this week then, shall we? Okay, yeah, Can you film yours at home? Sorry? Can you film yours at home? If we do it like Uh, a Skype, oh no, you can't because your camera's here. Yeah, but I can do it in the vlog room. Yeah, okay, fine, we'll do that. Okay, this Friday's show is going to be things that Dan and I said we were going to do in 2020. Did we do them? Uh, right. Let's let's get on then. Um, this is really interesting. Sub Rosa says, how do you guys handle humidity and your guitars, both in the studio and at home? Where I live, it's something I have to pay special attention to. This is really interesting. So when I was living in Australia, um, I used to live in North Queensland. And it would get wicked hot and wicked humid. Um, 
And it does, like, depending on where you go, certainly in Australia, you, you, you notice a difference. I remember when I was um, studying music, I was, I was studying with a, one of the guys there was a, an upright bass player. And he was telling me, he had, uh, in, in the summer, he'd have an apple in his case and in the winter he'd have um, like a dehumidifier because there's a, the thing about the, the bass, there's so much tension on those strings. And he told me the story that there was a, a guy that had this, um, like, you know, a couple hundred-year-old bass that was, it had dried out and as the, and it cracked and the bottom, uh, they held together, a bit, there's a bit of wire that goes around the base. Wow. And that cracked and came up and seriously injured him. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, obviously it's a, it's a bit, humidity with those sorts of instruments is a really big thing. Um, it's something I haven't had any issues with in the UK. I did have issues with it in Australia, yeah. living in extreme temperatures, uh, extreme heat and humidity. Um, but... Yeah, I haven't had an issue in the UK. One thing I will say, I had I had a gem in, in Australia and I left it in the car overnight and I got it out. Uh, um, I think I slept in and I got, up at like, I got it out of the car at 10 o'clock and that was enough to peel the fretboard <laughs> from the, the neck of the guitar. Um, never, ever leave your guitars in cases, no matter where you live. Never leave your guitars... Uh, in, sorry, in the car, um, always just bring them in home. And, to, and what you'll find is if your guitars are always in a living environment, they'll always be fairly, like temperature-wise at least, you know, not crazy. Um, yeah, so never never leave guitars in a lock-up um, or, you know, always take your instruments inside. Yeah, um, so dry is much, for acoustic guitars anyway, dry is much worse than wet. Um, because you can you can dehumidify a wet guitar. It's pretty hard to repair a guitar that's gone too far dry. Um, so if you live, I don't know, Colorado, um, there's places all over the US that, are, that have super dry climates. That's when you need humidifiers and stuff. Equally wet, it can be bad, of course, because the wood swells um and you need to that can cause damage but the the real structural damage happens uh, when the guitar dries out too much as dan said uk not really a problem because our relative humidity um is always uh about 98 yeah, percent is always kind of okay sure you don't really want to be leaving guitars over radiators um i must admit my collings acoustic is just out at home and it's mm. out uh it's a very lightly built solid wood guitar so it's susceptible to humidity we have our fire going we have everything going and i play it every couple of days to go i wonder if this has moved perfect nope yeah equally i had a gnla sat special with a maple neck that no matter where i went that neck was like all over the place <laughs> so I don't know. Um, despite what Dan just said about, um, y y well, no, in addition to what Dan just said about leaving your guitars in lockups and cars and stuff, if you aren't using it, the best place for it is in its case. Yeah. Because um, then at least it's kind of sort of uh, shielded from the massive changes. But as he says, if you leave it in a lockup or um, in freezing conditions or anything like that, then it's going to get cold or hot just the same so um yeah, yeah i don't uh same as dan never had a problem with it um in the uk right should we get on to some of these uh super chats then dan yes mate um, um matt lloyd said hey great to see you matt he says hey guys sorry i was absent for a couple of weeks i had a hospital scare not covid related but all is good now no way i guess 2020 didn't want to let me go i won anyway good to see both of you again you too matt hey good on you matt um, hope you're doing all right yeah matt. hope you hope you're feeling well buddy yeah yeah well on, on yet more good news chris norman says um hi guys after being seriously ill uh your channel has been a haven of joy and has inspired me to rebuild my pedal board thank you says chris norman well thank you chris thanks for being here uh caleb awesome. graham um, just want to say thanks to all your advice on building a two-tiered board. I finished it right before Christmas. All the best from Caleb. Thank you, Caleb. Oh, brilliant. Um, Chris Barrett, want to say thanks for what you do. I had a question about the Mesa Transatlantic TA30. 
Um, as a piece of backline for a venue I run, would it do a good job as both an a AC30 and a Fender Tweed amp? Um, I would say, yeah, I remember the Transatlantic with some... with oh, great, really great. Great fondness. The Transatlantic yeah. 15 was my favourite, actually. Yeah. That was killer, but the yeah. 30 is brilliant. Yeah, I think that would be a great... I think there's... Yeah, like a lot of Mesa amps, um, the EQ is powerful, the gain range is mm. powerful, there's always plenty of head... Well, maybe less so in an EL84 amp, but there's always enough headroom to get a usable clean sound. And of course, yeah. Mesa massively in the uh, in the guitar news this week, having just been acquired by Gibson. Lincoln Eck. Really I interesting. I saw that. Yeah, I, 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 um, a few people have asked us what we think about it. And then I've been following a few Gibson social posts and also some Mesa ones. Man, the people are unhappy. Yeah. The people are really aggressively unhappy about that. I mean, everyone's always unhappy about everything on social media, so we'll add that pinch of salt. Yes, exactly. But, um, it is interesting. I mean, I don't know another MI company that has a reputation as broken as Gibson's. Yeah, that's so unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Um, they I mean, had, I think they had a really wonderful opportunity to sort all that out when the new guy came in. Yeah. Well, it's generational, and, uh, isn't it? It doesn't happen overnight, that kind of thing. No, it takes a long time. He's still got to prove himself. Uh, and every time yeah. they sue a little company, everyone goes nuts. So, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we wish everyone luck. I just hope, I, I know a few people at Mesa. I've been there a few times. Um, and it's a brand that's very dear to my heart. And the people there are mm. dear to my heart. I just hope the people who've been there for decades, who have just a really strong hand in everything that company has become, look at their bank account over the next few weeks and just smile from ear to ear. I hope they've done well out of it. Yeah. Because they totally. deserve it. Totally. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Yep. You know, you, you, you put 20, 30, 40 years into something, make it great. You deserve a payday. I think. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. So good luck to uh, everyone there. Yep. Albus Band says, here's a little bit of love for the legends. How utterly awesome on a scale of one to ten will it be when Nam happens again? I've <laughs> missed you twice. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's so weird, isn't it? I mean, looking back over the video we put out on Friday, and I've been watching some movies and stuff, you know, and just seeing normal human interaction, people getting on and off airplanes and stuff like that. It's like, wow, that that seems utterly unthinkable. Yeah, yeah. So it will be great. It's been a long time. Yeah, you know, it's been nearly a year. Yeah, you know, us. Uh, I'm yeah. Nam's a, Nam's a funny one for us. Um, we love going out there uh, to see our friends and uh, you know see all the stuff. The Nam videos never really no. A bit, they're a bit pointless. It's a waste of time doing video at Nam. That's the for sure. best thing we did. Actually, we did an Instagram thing. Yeah. Where we had we did the one minute videos and yeah. that was brilliant fun. Well it's especially useless for us because we don't we don't you know, we're not a demo channel, like yeah. with no disrespect to anybody, you know, a lot of YouTube channels are well actually less so than before, but certainly not so long ago. A lot of YouTube channels were pure demo channels, so a company pays someone to do a demo. Um and their their sort of, you know, lifeblood was reporting on new products. Dan and I right from the start have kind of gone, well, we're sort of semi-interested in new products if it's if we're interested in it, but we're not really interested in just like the continual glut of new product mm. because, you know, yet another reason why I got out of guitar magazines is because I was not interested in about 90% of what we were publishing. Right. Which, you know, might sound a bit arrogant, but it's just you get to a certain age where you don't have enough time left to spend time on stuff you don't want to do, do you? Man, totally. you just got to do what you want to do. <laughs> And uh, and so for us, the like Dan said, the best thing about going to Nam is seeing old friends, finding out about the stuff we really do care about, and um, and trying to put something together on that. But yeah, mm. you know, every great YouTuber, retailer, um, you know, all people who make fantastic content are out there making the same video like five times over. So I don't know. We decided we wouldn't do that anymore. Yeah, not that we wouldn't go, but we wouldn't. The, the objective wouldn't be out there to make Nam videos. Yeah. You know, we'd, um, you know, I really love the idea of, of, you know, heading out there that time, but heading down Nashville and doing a country music special. Yeah. 
I'm fascinated by that. I'm fascinated by the players and the tones they get. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think that's got to be high up on the on the list for when things get back to normal. Um, yes. Groovy. David Burke says, howdy, chaps. Dan looked up at his T-shirt. Still loving the life of a loyal upside-down Aussie, I see. Just wanted to support and say the Harmonious Monk is epic. Thanks. Thank you, David. That's Thanks, David. So kind, mate. Thank you. Um, we're so proud of that pedal. It really is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It is. And uh, and the guys at Jam, we love them. They're just the best bunch of guys. We always have a fantastic time when we hang out with them. Um, but we love their ethos. We love the way they approach what they do. And it is with passion and um without any there's no shortcuts you know it's uh, no compromise just yeah they're just singing from the same hymn book as us we just love them totally totally can you imagine sending an accountant in there <laughs> and going uh, where can you, you can you shave some euros off this production cost <laughs> boy oh boy and literally just sack the whole of the artwork department <laughs> It is amazing what they do. It's totally amazing. And long may it continue. Totally amazing. Um, Justin, right. Justin Balog says, watching TPS is basically insider trading on reverb. You gents move the market. Thanks for your commitment <laughs> to this creative community. Legends. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. That, yeah, that's very kind. Um, got, I, uh, my, you... friends have, my, my friends have stopped telling me about um, gear that they like and gear they're looking for. Because they're afraid that I'll mention it on the show, and it'll, you know. So yeah, it's very funny. It really didn't mean, don't mean for that stuff to happen, but um, yeah. Uh, we've got Ewan Harris. I think it's Ewan E O I N. I think it's Ewan. Ewan Harris says, "Hi guys. Um, do you have any advice on removing noise from a three amp rig, and how to deal with the phase issues when recording three amps?" I love the show. Can't thank you enough for for all your help, Ewan. Yeah, so Ewan, what you need to do with when you're recording three amps, so I'm assuming that you've split the signal and you've got three outputs and they're going to the three amplifiers. The issue with doing that is if if you don't isolate that, you get earth loops um, where you have multiple paths to earth, and that creates a loop which basically becomes an antenna and it picks up all the noise. So the way to get rid of that is by isolating, you have to have a path to earth. So picking one amp, your main amp is the path to earth, and then isolating the other two. And you do that with um, an audio transformer. So there are lots of products that can split the signal and um, go through audio transformers. And the great thing about using products like that is they generally have a phase switch on them. So they can turn uh, the secondary, they can switch the outputs. They can, yeah, switch the... Um, yeah, split the phase on the, on the secondary of the transformer, uh, which means that you have isolation, so you no longer have earth loops from the three amplifiers, and you have a, a phase switch so that you can put them all in relative phase. So a, a, a quick demonstration of that, Mick, I'm going, uh, I'm one amplifier, and I'm pushing in like this, right? And so Mick's going to go with me. Ah, uh, now there we, we get now, so now. See now you're freezing. Phase. Now I'm going to go out of phase. <laughs> I can't even see if that works. It's kind. It's kind of working. Um, it's not. It's not being helped by the. Uh, late, it's not being helped by the latency that you're seeing, and also the yeah, uh, right. intermittent internet. Nice. But um, um, here so you go. I'll, I'll do. A, I'll do a mono demonstration. Yeah, so, so, here so, we are in no, phase. No, here we you're are. You're doing left and right speaker. Mix doing left and right speaker. So here it's mix. Mix. Mix is two amplifiers. So, yeah, now he's out of phase. Now I'm going to switch the phase on one of the channels and he is back in relative phase. So the, your main amplifier, your amplifier that is earthed, that doesn't get touched. What you're going to do is you're going to set up the other amplifiers to be in relative phase with the main amplifier. So that will solve your phase problems and that will solve your earth loops and, ground, and noise issues. Which, of course... Did, did you say, Dan, that, of course, you need a device that can switch phase and isolate on both of the other amps? Yeah. Yeah. 
so what if you're using three apps you can i mean it's easy enough to get a device that just uh splits the signal once and get two of those devices and piggyback them together there are some devices that will do multiple amplifiers with multiple um, phase switches on them um I think there's one that does this, like seven outputs on it. It's really clever. But anyway, have a hunt around. Yeah. What you're looking for is um, isolation and phase reversal. Yeah, and then once you get it into your recording thing, if you find that something isn't phased right, if it's completely out of phase, you can just add any plug-in that's got a phase flip and flip the phase, and some doors have it, you know, just as part of the channel strip, I believe. Um or if it's slightly out of phase, which is a whole other problem, um, there are many plugins that you can get to correct phase somewhere between 0 and 180. And, yeah. um, the, for example, in UA land, the Little Labs little labs do a really great one, which I use every now and again. But it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a rabbit that's, hole. That's different to, to 0 to 180. Yeah. You're talking about a, a, a time phase. Yeah, it's, it's a different yeah. different issue. Yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, good luck. Good luck. So the way we do Indeed. it, the way we do it is we have, um, it, for two amps, they just come out of whatever, uh, G2 or G3 we're using. And that deals with phase and, um, uh, isolation just straight out the two outputs. If it's three, um, what we'll probably do is sit a humdinger. Dan makes a product called the humdinger, uh, in one of the loops, which will be the dry amp and then left and right out of the main two amps of G3. So that's how we do it. But either um, way, just to reiterate the point, on the other two amps, so you've got your main amp, and then on the other two amps, you need a device that can flip phase and isolate. Yeah, exactly that. Ian M says, cheers, gents. Just got the new VC35 Deluxe. I love the wet dry with my egg mater. Oh, Curious, cool. the, the reverb seems only noticeable at max settings. Is this normal? No, it's not. Check the tube. Yeah, good shout. Yeah, check the tube. Um, Does it have a separate send and reverb, uh, send and return for the reverb on that? Pretty sure it's a whole valve. Right. Yeah. Uh, check. Yeah, find out which is the reverb tube and um, replace it. Yeah. It's not uncommon, unfortunately. Um, I've, in fact, I think we've got a problem with our V one hundred and forty similarly yeah yeah so check that as a first instance I, I would say that victory's customer service is off the scale good yeah um, brilliant. so by all means drop them in it um drop them an email they will help you you know in the first instance try and come to an easy fix if you can't fix it they will arrange for it to be sorted out their customer service is second to none yeah david lee says two things first thank you for talking about red light fever the other day it's the single biggest hurdle in my guitar journey. Second, the only pedal to kick the KOT off my board is the DNM drive. Wow. Huh. Thanks, David. Um, yeah, so yeah, red light fever, man. It's so interesting. Yeah, um, um, it, it's the only thing. It's one of those annoying things that you just get to a point where you you realise how much it's destroying your performance and your playing and something in your brain clicks and you just go i'm not gonna i'm just not gonna have this anymore mm. you, it's because it, it just spoils everything and there's there's a kind of precipice over which we probably don't dare to look as guitar players um yeah where we go no i'm just gonna play i'm just gonna play and i'm gonna try and put all this mind stuff out of the way because this mind stuff is standing in between me and the thing that I need to be doing here. So mind stuff, you get out. Uh, I just need to connect this, what I'm feeling and what I'm, you know, what I want to emote to these. And uh, that's where the magic is. Sounds very hippie, yep. but it's very true. Brad says, hello from Orlando. Hello. Um, SG Junior into Carpe Diem, into V40 the Duchess with the reverb cranked. Most inspired I've been in months. <laughs> Happy days are here again. Yeah. That is awesome, Brad. We were in Orlando, uh, God, again, not last year, but the year before, at the end, and uh, we just, man, we had the best time. Orlando is brilliant. And it's so warm, Mick. It's so warm in Orlando. 
<sighs> yeah, I think I'm. I generally, genuinely would be happier in Sweden and Iceland. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I, I've got a very dear friend who has moved to Sweden, and he absolutely loves it. He lives in this most beautiful place, and he's got a like a lake at the back of his house and stuff. And he goes, you know, it, it freezes over and stuff in winter. But you can see he goes, like, ice swimming. Yeah. And he absolutely loves it. And it does look really beautiful. I just, I think, because I was, you know, was, like, born in Brisbane and I was acclimatised and, yeah, it's so rare that I'm warm through here. I mean, when I first got here, I used to wear my jacket inside, like my big coat. I, I just would, sit in my big coat. I'd be interested to know if you could face trying the Wim Hof thing. The cold showers. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I reckon, I don't know about you, but when I go on a walk in in the early morning and it's freezing, I, I then feel warm for the rest of the day. Oh, wow, really? Because the, the contrast between... I mean, if you get really cold, if you get, like, bone cold, then and it's hard to warm up. But I only ever get yeah. that if I sit around a lot. But if I go out and it's freezing cold and I come back into a nice warm house and then get on with my day... A bit like exercise, you know. If, if you get up and you don't do anything, you feel lethargic. If you get up and do some exercise, you actually feel better during the day. I think uh, I'd love to know. I, what, what do I have to do to get you to try it? Try swimming in ice? No, I don't want you to do that. The cold shower thing. The Wim Hof thing? Yeah. Um, I'd be, it is very interesting. So I, I when, when I was, when I was, if I was training for a comp, I used to have, cold showers yeah. every morning and it was just horrific but you did feel wonderful afterwards yeah. for anyone who doesn't know look up a guy called uh, vim it might be pronounced wim i think it's v-i-m isn't it or it might be w-i-m i think it's, I think it's w-i-m yeah vim sorry um i think he's <laughs> just check all this misinformation coming out of me is he dutch i don't know or is he german Anyway, but he holds a bunch of world records for just crazy things. And he has this method of um, uh, cold showering and some other things, holding breath and stuff like that, which I have uh, really good friends who use for their anxiety and depression. Um, to put a serious note on it, you know, he's he's very effective in that world. But yeah, if, you know, stepping back or two, uh, a step or two from that. Um, I'm I'm just I'm kind of interested. I did it for a little while. I could manage about twenty seconds of a freezing cold shower on a cold day. It's like, yeah, I'm not sure about this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Anyway, sorry. There, there's a there's a uh, a tangent for you. Um, let's catch up on some of these. Justin Dierenberger. Did we? What was the question? Did we answer the question? Uh... <laughs> No, he said, he said it was the best, uh, most inspired sound he'd had. Oh, yes. Um, was that, oh, please. Carpe DM. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, you know what might be a really good idea? To revisit those pedals, like the Carpe Diem, the, um, the, uh, what was it? The, uh, the original Thorpey one that we did, the, the Big Muff thing. Yeah, yeah. Muff, Muff, Muff Fallout Cloud. Cloud. Somebody actually suggested this. Pedals that we absolutely loved and, and, and plug them into the room today and see how we get on with them. Yeah, somebody actually suggested this on uh, over the weekend as an Did idea, idea for shows we Unagi. could do. Yeah. <laughs> um Would be good, actually, because it's the kind of thing... I mean, I could certainly come in and just hack through uh, a bunch of pedals, which would be easy and good fun. Um, Justin Durenberger. Hi, Justin. Hey, Justin. Greetings from Paris, he says. Hello, Paris. Oh. Uh, thank you very much for the weekly inspiration. I finally received my Harmonious Monk, despite COVID and Brexit. It's great. It is the pedal. Uh, is it the pedal you are proudest of so far? Um, it, I think that's a bit like asking which of your children do you like best. Everyone secretly knows, but no one's willing to say it out loud. Dan's not saying anything. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we've had... Um... I think because we were there with them, you know, over 
the, you know a, a couple of times during the, the process. And so, look, with the DNM drive, we had a chat with Robert, who we love, is one of the best best guys in the business, and he produced a prototype for us, which we loved, and you know we were away. But I think we had more to do with the actual um, just being there in the you know while this was all happening, and we were tweaking the circuit, you know, there with the guys, yeah, and uh, you know, and we were in Athens, man, you know, <laughs> it was just. It's in the shadow of the Acropolis. Yeah. It was just the best, the yeah, best it's, experience. It's a different experience, isn't it? Because with a DNM drive, you know, you're trying to position a, an overdrive pedal in a market of thousands. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, it was some achievement that, that, you know, the idea from us and the way that Keeley brought it to fruition actually does sit in a, in a unique place in the market and it's sold well. People love it. You know, the sales prove that it is popular and it really works for people. So that that is a that is a pride of of one kind. With the Harmonious Monk, there aren't that many harmonic tremolo pedals out there, mm. and I think our connection with harmonic tremolo because of Joey and all of that, given that we didn't really know much about it before, it's a fairly unique sound. You know, it's a different kind of achievement. I think um, it also that. <laughs> On any given day, you know, I might use a different overdrive pedal instead of the DNM drive because they all do awesome things, right? Mm. I wouldn't use another harmonic tremolo pedal at this point. Sure, it's yeah, yeah. It, you know, we say it ourselves, but it is blooming brilliant. It it just bing hits that. Yeah, it does sound magic. Dings the bell, I think. Yeah. Um, but thank you very much for Justin, uh, Justin, for buying one. We have emailed. If you're in batch two of the harmonious monks and you bought from us we've emailed you today saying uh dear you know whoever really sorry about brexit it's not our fault gov um if you want to cancel your order you're more than welcome because what we're discovering is that some people in some territories are getting charged vat so you've paid 239 quid for your pedal 229 i can't remember what they were and you're getting slapped with 20 percent vat on top of that plus an import charge. Um, that is, as far as we're aware, that is not correct. But the couriers, because everything was done so last minute, there was poor information on everything, depending oh, on the man. courier it is. Also, the couriers are happily ignoring the fact that the sale was made before the 31st of December. So, but, you know, as with any great change uh, of any type, you know, the change is made and then it takes people a year to catch up with making it work. So I think there are only six of you. Um, if you want to refund because you don't want to pay all that extra crap, then we will happily do that for you and just go and buy it direct from Jam or somewhere in Europe where you won't have to pay that extra cash. Um, sure. We apologise. Better news in the US, if you go buy a UPS, you shouldn't have to pay any of that stuff. So, um, yes, good. it's it's just one of the examples where um, dear old Brexit is causing a lot of companies a lot of very big problems, not least food producers. But we knew that was going to happen, yep. didn't we, Dan? Four years ago, we, we knew that was going to happen. Right, Brent Porter says, anything you're looking forward to out of Pseudo NAM this year? The Sonic Blue Silver Sky or Sonic Blue American Strap for me? Fingers crossed. They're doing um, a Sonic Blue Silver Sky. Yeah, Sonic Blue Silver Sky, apparently, yeah. I want to cut. You couldn't get Sonic Blue bloody guitars before we started doing this. No one wanted Sonic Blue <laughs> Strats before this. Now they're everywhere. Yeah, um, I, um, Actually, I might get one. Yeah, no idea. Let's see what Chase lists and that's sort of announced at the show. Um, I don't know. Um, nothing, nothing in particular. Uh, is there another automaton on the way? Um, not that I know of. I saw. I got a press release from Gretsch today because of my old job. Right. I'm still. I still find myself on loads of press lists. And uh, Gretsch have done, um, bizarrely, an 80s reissue guitar, which is an odd thing to do. But anyway, in the 80s, they did a bunch of sparkle jets. Oh, yeah, man. In gold and silver with a Bigsby, which apparently is inspired by the 90s or late 80s and 90s uh, North West American rock music scene. Which, right. what's that? Grunge? <laughs> is 
Is it? Is that what they're talking about? Seattle? Must be. Anyway, I have got a very, very soft spot for Sparkle Jets. Yeah. Tell you what I saw in a press release was um, a new range of Jackson guitars. Yeah. That look fantastic. Really? What? We met Grover Jackson at NAMM a few years ago. Do you remember? Yeah, he's got nothing to do with Jackson anymore, but... No, he was doing stuff for Friedman. Yeah. Yeah. And... I love those Friedman guitars. They were wonderful. Yeah, they were. They 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 felt like someone who knew what they were doing had, had really yeah, man. breathed on really guitars. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, new products from them. Um, it would be great as and when Chase Bliss do a delay version of the uh, Automaton if that ever happens. Um, as I said, I I don't know that it. We would we would know if it was going to be happening probably. Um, yeah. You would have thought they'd be working on it at some point in the future. Yeah. Um, Let's what, see. What uh, David Rustad says, Monk at two o'clock mix settings joins the Cali stacked as always on for me. Thanks from the fundamentals and the core of my being, friends. Stay safe. <laughs> Thanks, David. David. Yeah, that was about that was that was my second input on the harmonious monk. Number one, it needs to sound awesome. Number two, it needs to sound awesomest at two there two o'clock on all the controls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bobler forty two, uh, you've done a super chat, but you haven't. Uh, there's I can't see a chat from you, so we'll we'll keep an eye out. Uh, yeah, can't see it. Can't see it. Um, Gordon Rankin. Hi, Gordon. Uh, nice to hear from you. He says... Hey, Gordon. Uh, can you go through your setup and use of the Harmonious Monk? Um, as you know, we never read the manuals. Uh, well, my settings are on the bottom of the manual, which is everything at two o'clock in the harmonic mode uh, and the minus, the, the, the less extreme waveform. Mm -hmm. what, what about you, Dan? Uh, yeah, I'm not far off that. I think... I use the um, I have the, the speed really slow, so the double speed is my normal speed. Yeah. But then I'll have the speed like really slow. So when I go wet dry, it's just this bit of movement between the two amps, like the slow movement, um, which sounds epic. Uh, and I probably have it a little bit more subtle than you. So yeah. the depth is back. The the mix is back a little bit. Um, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. The it's... thing is, I really like the normal tremolo sound in it as well. Yeah. Um. I. I. I there actually will be a scenario where I have two on my two on my board. Well, um, in the interests of uh, com completeness, I was I just did a little spot check on some batch two ones. Um. And I had two uh, hooked up with a QMX2. Right. So I had two Harmonious Monks just having a quick listen. And um, set one faster and one slower. <laughs> On the harmonic uh, mode, it's like, yes. Lovely. Which, which gave nice. rise to all kinds of ideas. But um, anyway. Yep. Um, Eric Siegfried says, hi, guys, and thanks for all the great shows during COVID times. I was re-watching the Simon Neal episode and can't get the medium sound out of my head. How does the audio kitchen big trees take pedals? Um, I, uh, it's wonderful. Uh, yeah, it takes pedals great. It's a preamp. Loads of producers use it as like a compressor um, because of the way that you can affect the gain stages it's magic, but yeah, it is a preamp. Um, I guess I mean, for me, all the audio kitchen stuff takes pedals brilliantly, um, and no uh, thanks in no small part due to the preamp design. So yeah, it takes pedals lovely, really lovely. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just going back over some of the earlier ones. Um, I think okay. we'll, shut, we'll so, shut the super chats off a bit earlier tonight because. Um, uh, we had trouble keeping up with them last week, but uh, um, blah, blah, blah. Hunter Strasser says, "Hey, from Dallas, Texas, I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm looking for a good dual humbucker solid body guitar. I have a Sir Classical Strat and a Collins i35, 
but I need something more fusion-y. Interesting. I, I'm wondering how it could get any more fusion-y than the i35, but... Well, so he wants a solid body. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, so, right. Start your start your decision making with. There are some dual humbucker solid body guitars that are very simple. For example, mm. slab body mahogany type guitar, which might be something like an SG. Um, there are various. Uh, there have been various slab body Les Pauls over the years. They tend to be P90s, but maybe there were some humbuckers or something like seeing as you are already into Collings the guitar that immediately springs to mind to me is the 290 with humbuckers which is an amazing guitar in fact I've been gassing for one really hard just recently um, but if you want a bit more co complexity in the tone and you are thinking about that sort of fusion -y thing I was listening to a record the other day which is actually my favorite Robin Ford record and it is called Truth nope it's not Lies. It's called Tiger Walk. Uh, right. He did it in the late 90s, and there's a picture of him in there with his Esprit, right? So Google the Robin Ford Esprit, the Fender Esprit guitar. It's this sort of weird-ass looking double cut, isn't a 335, isn't a Strat, isn't an SG. Mm. Uh, and it's chambered, as far as I was aware. Um, and so the chambered solid body route could be something interesting, because what you get with a chambered guitar usually also has a carved top, um, or it can sometimes have a carved top. There's complexity and overtone in those guitars, which is less sort of visceral and fundamental yeah. than you would get with a yeah. straight slab mahogany body guitar. And some of those things can be really nice. Check out some of Gene Baker's guitars. Um, I think Gene cool. Baker. I, I, so I've played a, a bunch of his guitars. Far out, man. Really lovely. The one that I was going to mention, for just, come, just for a different take on stuff, is the... A Yamaha SG2000. Yeah. Those guitars, as far as fusion -y type things are concerned, yeah. are absolutely phenomenal. What a great shout. And over there's plenty of used ones out there, but there's yeah. also like the, um, I don't know, maybe they did a 500, 700, 900, 1200. I don't know, pick your hundreds. They've done loads of variants over the years. There's loads of used ones sure. out there. Um, at pretty sensible money. Yeah, they're yeah. wonderful. There's oh, my man. favourite Carlos Santana tones are on that guitar. And then there's, you know, just look through Instagram. Follow a load of guitar companies on Instagram, like all those companies like um, Revolta. Um, who else? Saul Cole. Because if you've got the calling, sounds like you're into that. You know, you're you're in, you're not scared of spending a few quid on a guitar. Mm. Um, there's just some amazingly beautiful guitars. Cower, check out Cower. K A U. Oh, Huber. Huber, Nick Huber. Go yeah. and check out the Dolphin by Huber. Man, epic, epic guitars. What would you buy, Dan? What would be your choice? For, a, I would find a really amazing SG. I, I think the, the thing with Fusion... You mean Yamaha SG? Uh, n well, no. I mean, a, I mean a Gibson SG. Okay. Um, I, as, much as, as much as I love the SG thing, and I think one day I will end up with an SG, because um, they, they have such great guitars and, and the clean tones from them are, you know, are everything. I'm, I think what I'm trying to do now tonally is, is still lean heavily on, on classic things. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, I don't know if it's either good or bad, but there's there's just some tones that I've heard from SGs that I've really, con like, so beautiful that I've never heard from another guitar. So, like, when I when I first heard Paul Stacey on his SG um, at the 606 in London, playing through High Watson and uh, Laney supergroups, it's just the most extraordinary sound. The clean sound from it, though, from this beautiful old SG. I think, um, yeah, a really wonderful, flexible, uh, rich, classic dual humbucker sound. Nice. Nice. Um, I don't know what I'd have. 
I just I love that gold top Les Paul so much. Yeah. Something that, that sounds like that. That does everything, that guitar. It's extraordinary. Yeah, something that sounds like the that. The clean tones from it are unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, Yasko says, Hey, Mick and Dan, could you tell me how I can set up the Collider with the G2 and MIDI? I can't get it to work with the presets on MIDI channel 2. Uh, and which power adapter do I need by the gig rig to power it? I think I know what Dan's going to say. Um, so, right. You need to just email support at the gig rig dot com, and we'll get in contact and go through it with you. Going through um, many stuff because, you know, you've got to go through menus and make sure you're, you're sending the right information. You've got to go through the, the Collider manual, make sure that if you're, you know, that you've got the right CC numbers and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's, but we're really happy to go through it with you. So just send a, an email through to support at thegigwood.com and we will, um, yeah, help you get it sorted. But cool. the Collider is brilliant. Yeah, Absolutely it really is. brilliant pedal. It, it really is. Uh, Kevin Van Halen says, hope you guys are doing well. We are, thank you, Kevin. Hope you and yours are as well. He says, I'm turning 40 tomorrow. I've got a JHS, JHS Bender as a present for myself. Enjoyed the video you did on it. Love the pedal. All the best from Canada. Happy Lovely. 40th, mate. I think I can say with some confidence it's been my favourite decade yet. Yeah. 40s are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Don't remember the first two. Don't really remember the next one. Uh, this one's been great. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> David Kemp says, I just purchased a Strymon Deco and I love it. Where would you guys recommend putting this in my pedal chain? Um, that's a really interesting question. So the those tape delay effects, I, I use a Red Panda um, Tensor. It does a similar job. It does that, those tape echo things. I, I don't think it does this flange thing as well as the Strymon does. So it it depends if you it depends what you want to use it for. If you want to use it primarily for flange, then you can you know put it earlier on in your chain. If you're using it for the funky tape effects, I would put it much later. Um, yeah. I guess that would stand to reason, wouldn't it? Because yeah. it's doing a tape job, therefore it would be at the end of the chain. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mick says Blake Pursley. Mick says Blake Pursley. Did you ever initially put the higher output antiquities in blue to hear yourself better live? I play a very stratty sounding strat and finding it hard to hear myself. Um, hi Blake. No, that's not why I put them in. I put them in because, um, why did I put them in? I, I just had a bit of gas about pickups at the time. Would have been about 2005, six, maybe, I think. Um, and I, I just, I can't, I don't know if I'd been talking to Seymour Duncan maybe, which is a mm. bit of a spawny thing to say, but honk, um, I might have been at a NAMM show or something. You know, you just get like this thing that happens and you're like, oh, I need to do that. And I got some antiquities because I thought, you know, they, they'd be great and they were great. And I definitely in, uh, enjoyed the sound of the guitar more with them in. I n I've never had a problem being heard live because, uh, again, another spawny thing. Say, I've always played really loud. Um, yeah. And done so. Sorry, mate, just gonna, uh, uh, sorry. Brian Parra says, I came to you for pedal advice. I've left ordering a pizza oven. So I just had to get that in there before it's, uh, his comment disappeared off the screen. Brian, the, there's one thing we haven't quite worked out yet. Like when you cook a pizza, you can get a bit of sort of charcoal -y soot on the bottom of the pizza. So it's quite important to clean the stone off between each bake. But doing that is hard at 500 degrees C. So um, <laughs> I, I'm going to email Uni's customer support and say, what do you do about this then? Because it makes the bottom of the pizza taste a bit, um, you know, charcoal, which you don't really want to eat. Unless you're a spaniel. Um, so, yeah, and I thought uh, I always played unapologetically loud. Also, I've always used amps and tones that are very low in bass mm. and rich in upper mids and treble, right? Because I don't know how experienced you are with playing live, but one thing you learned the hard way or that I learned the hard way was that um, that sound that you get at home 
really sucks in a live environment because it's always too yeah. bassy, it's always too gainy, and what you lose is any sort of transient. So the first rule of thumb, if you want to be heard in a live mix, number one, turn the bass down. Number two, yeah. turn the gain down. Number three, turn the treble, the presence, and the volume up. And if your bandmates tell you you're too loud, then you're just going to have to work on your technique a bit and be loud in the bits where you need to be loud and sit back in the bits where you need to be less loud. Yeah. But it really is about EQ um, as much as it is about volume. Uh, I actually prefer weaker strap pickups. So the ones that I've replaced um, the antiquities in blue with measure, well, at least two k less which is significant mm. in a strap pickup they're equally if not more audible because yeah. of the transients and the way that guitar delivers so it's not all about dc resistance it's not all about output with pickups for, for volume it's really about the shape of what's coming out of that speaker um and yes stratty strats can get lost because they do have a bit of a mid dip especially if you use the two and four so the advice there would be to use something like a tube screamer or even a clon type um, to really give you that sort of spike uh, in the audibility. The Tube Screamer does it in a different place, does it in a sort of low yeah. mid, which sort of fattens it out. The the Klon does it, well, it does it at 1K, but there's also an additional bit of treble in there as well, which just helps you be yes. heard. Active EQ actually boosts the treble yeah. as opposed to just shoving it off. But normally, um, in terms of audibility, the two, the two big problems are too much bass, too much gain. Yep. Elliot Ball says, Mick, tell us about your motorbike. Okay. Um, uh, it's a Ducati Multistrada 1200 Enduro. Uh, oh. It's totally awesome. Um, but uh, I don't get to ride it much, and I don't think I'm going to get to ride it much now we've got a dog. So um, just because everywhere I go, she's got to come with us, which requires a car. So uh, it might be the end of the bike. It might be the end of biking days to me for me and if it is uh, all that money's going to go on a vintage strap yeah so, baby um that might be the that might be the the payoff but yeah it's it's an amazing uh, it's just utterly amazing piece of kit yeah. yeah this is really interesting jonathan burton says hi gents do you more often find that inspiration strikes and you then must find the gear for the sound in your head or do you mess about with kit and the new sound seems to bring new music with it? Jonathan, I'm definitely in camp two. Um, unless I'm mucking around with just acoustically and I find some nice chords, then I'll have to find a sound that goes with it. But I find that for some reason I'm so sensitive to tonal changes and that it'll drastically change the way that I play and the things that come out. Um, so, you know, I, th I, I, when I was first playing with the CXM, I think I wrote two songs mm. uh, or at least parts for two songs just from exploring the sounds in that pedal. It just drew things out. Um, uh, they're not happy songs. Um, it, yeah, it's very... Yeah, so I'm definitely in Camp 2. Uh, I have spent most of my life in Camp 1, and I'm learning to migrate to Camp 2. Because Camp 1 is gas, right? Camp 1 is kind of... It's partially, I've got this sound in my head, therefore I think this piece of gear can fulfil it. Right, that's very interesting, yeah. And that is vicarious living. It is psychological time and it is fundamentally dangerous to human existence, not least guitar players, because it's what you spend all your money on and feel disappointed and then repeat ad nauseum. I've been doing that for the last 30 years. And, and there comes a point where you go, ah, oh, and all guitar shop owners are quaking in their boots at this point. Um, it, that's, not where it, that's not where inspiration comes from at the end of the day. You know, I can't tell you how many things I've bought going, yeah, now this is going to make me record that record. I, I will reference band meme 666 again. If you don't follow band meme 666 on Instagram, please do, because he strikes right to the heart of everything that upsets us most, and I like that. <laughs> um, and he's, he often has a pop at TPS, and I absolutely love it. I wish he did it more. But um, it... 
you, you have to you have to do two. You have to do two. And I would yeah. cite the CXM nineteen seventy eight that Dan's talking about, reverb as a pedal that did exactly that. In fact, that's that strat that uh, oh, it's not here. The strat that um, Simon Green lent me, sixty one strat. Um, I I've done more creative stuff on that guitar than I have on any of my other guitars. That's amazing. In terms of sat at home, you know, or sat in here playing. It, it just takes me into a place I want to go. And yet, mm. when I've recorded, I, funnily enough, doing the, doing the video on Friday, looking back over the year, whenever I've done any serious recording, it's always been a Gibson. <laughs> wow. Yeah, or the Supro, or something that isn't a Strat, because I think the Strat puts me in that place where I'm trying to be John Mayer, Doyle Bramble, and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Whereas the Gibson right. makes me go, I can't do that on this guitar, therefore I have to do something else. That's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah, so but, you're sort of you're framing it differently. But if I was doing a gig, it would be the Strat every day of the week because that's yeah, pretty much the only guitar that I can guarantee that I can make work live. But Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Connor McCabe says, Thank, thanks to you both for years of advice and inspiration. You've taken me from a Line 6 Spider to a burgeoning wet-dry wet rig. That spring tank mug is epic. <laughs> that it's perfect for drip coffee. Very good, Connor. Boom, boom. Awesome. Uh, Uwe Landsberg says... Uwe, Uwe, Uwe. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, he says, hey, Mick and Dan, here's an idea for a show. Your gear milestones. So your first, best, weirdest, most important gear you've owned and how it changed you. Like the oh, automaton... Oh, wonderful. That's great. ...brought Mick to the dark side. <laughs> Thanks for the show. Oh, that's a blooming brilliant idea. That's a great idea. So we should we should pick some categories then. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, like most existentially upsetting. <laughs> I've got that. Yeah, best doorstop. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, that's really cool. Um, Airfire um, says uh, it was my birthday on Friday, uh, and the only thing I haven't bought myself in my hobby categories is guitar. What are your suggestions? For under a hundred pounds. Reverb.com. Yeah. And find some kind of used something weird. Buy something really weird. I like that. Uh, or a Squire Affinity Strat or Telly. Yep. You might be Perfect. able to find one of those for under a hundred quid. It's a tough call. Tim Tim Hong says any switches other than Atom that offer stereo loops. Currently have a one control with DC two W and Lex in mono, echoes in GFI reverb in stereo after. Okay, so you're switching the pedals before. Okay, um, um, yeah, yeah. There are lots of other things. Um, ES eight has got stereo loops. I the the one thing about the the Atom and G three is that you can pick the loops. You can choose as many. Or as few stereo loops as you like, um, but there are switches out there that do have stereo loops. Um, and off the top of my head, I can't think of any except the ESH. So that's definitely worth a book. Uh, Srikanth, Srikanth Murthy says, "I'm getting buzz from my rig. It's a Katana 50." And Ibanez, I'm assuming Ibanez guitar, no pedals. Uh, it's on all the pickups. I've tried turning off all appliances and lights, but it persists. Could the issue be the socket or the wiring? It's an old apartment. Uh, okay, so the first thing to do is check that you're not using a speaker lead. It wouldn't be the first time that someone's used a speaker lead as their main lead, their main guitar lead. Um, and if you're still, if, if that's fine, you need to check um, check the guitar. Is there an, an earth that's come off the guitar? Yeah. Um, that's what I was going to say. Okay, unplug. So unplug the 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 uh, the cable from the amplifier. All right. See if it's still making that noise. Um, do you have any other guitars to plug in? Actually, here's a really good one. Roll the volume all the way down on the guitar and plug it in. Does it still make the noise? And if the noise only happens when you roll the volume up, then um, 
yeah, there is, the, you know, the problem is external from the amplifier. Um, what else? What else? What else? Do you have dimmer lights in your house, dimmer switches, and are they down? And they'll be on the, you know, if they're, if you turn them down, um, you, yeah. Dimmer switches uh, are different nowadays from from olden times, and they they are, can be really really noisy and dump a whole bunch of rubbish to ground. And your amplifier can pick that up. So try those things, and um, yeah, good luck. Noise, it's yeah. a nightmare. The the first thing to try though is just check that that guitar is earthed, that the earth connection yep. hasn't come off. Um, Secondly, you need to be sure that what you're hearing is extraneous buzz and not just you've got the gain turned up to max because That's right. it will buzz. I mean, if you've yep. got the gain up to max and you're using you know, any guitar, there will be buzz, there will be hum because that's the nature of gain. So try all those things. Nick Orr. Uh, hi, Nick. He says, I'm looking for a delay and reverb pedal that has series parallel functionality but i can't find one why is this feature so uncommon can it be done as a mod uh i'm considering the wetter box lund from ann arbor michigan yeah so the the delays the series parallel thing and the delay it requires two separate delay engines um there are so yeah the future factory is a good example does it it's brilliant um, but delay and re the... delay and reverb, Dan. Oh, delay and reverb. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. So what it requires, if you've got a delay and reverb in one, you need to be able to alter the signal path. So. Um, yeah, I mean something like a, the, the weather box or, you know, whatever, a mixer, will be able to, you know, we'll put those in parallel. I think various multi-effects may have that functionality. I don't know if Helix can do it. HX Stomp, maybe. Um, check that out. Uh, the various modelers. Um, I don't know if it does. I don't even, I don't know if the uh, Planetarium Neon Egg, Neon Egg Planetarium does it. But that's not... <laughs> particularly um practical pedal for on your board yeah delay and reverb and parallels are really it's worth it it's maybe not a whole show but it's certainly worth a um a vlog because it's a really interesting thing putting delay and reverb in parallel thomas neeson thomas neeson from denmark says uh quick question what are you guys gassing for at the moment time bit more um but apart from that what would i love <sighs> i'm guessing for a new apollo interface oh really what, which one do you want the four input one. Oh yeah because well, you want more inputs yeah just i've only got two inputs at the moment i could really use three well i'm sure we can make that happen dan Cool. Uh, I was thinking about whether we um, look at a Quad X for the studio. Right. So you could maybe have one of these. Oh, man, that would be amazing. Not a Quad X, an 8X, whatever the, the rack mount one is, but with new Thunderbolt Yeah, yeah. rubbish on it because we've gone Thunderbolt on all the machines. Okay, I'm sure we could talk about that. Okay, great. There um, you go. So well, my guess is sorted. All, yeah, time. I agree you? with Dan. Um, I, everything I'm gassing for is an excuse to not deal with what I've got. So I really, yeah, I really know. want a Collins two hundred and ninety dual humbucker. Which is the kind? Is the, is the i thirty five that I want? No, you want the jazz one, don't you? Yeah. What's the jazz one? Uh, CL? No. Right. Not CL. Uh, it's the... I forget. Uh, anyway. 
Yeah. That guitar haunts my dreams. There we, if I'm guessing for a guitar, it's that one. Yeah. And, a, and an SG. I would like an SG. Gibson SG. Yeah. Just the right one. Um, and I would like a Collins Soko. Yeah. But none of which I'll play because I don't play the guitar at the moment anyway. So it's it's terrible, isn't it? It's terrible. Uh, I would also look, like a two everyone's rock. Everyone's in flux at the moment. It, don't put too much pressure on yourself. No, 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 I'm not. I'm, I don't, don't judge it. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm there. No point judging it. It is what it is. No, totally. Um, a two rock TS1, I would like. There we go. Yeah. Um, G Barge says, gentlemen, I have so many questions, not least how I can possibly survive without a CXM 1978 MT3. At least the muck is ordered. Encouraging all to nourish our brains with newness and variety, hopefully outdoors, even on hay bales. Good health. Oh, cheers, G Barge. And thank you very much for your generosity, mate. That's amazing. Um, yes, totally. Uh, it's so, you know, as we, we did talk about inspiration and, and how sometimes that, that new piece of gear can spark that. I think it's very important to balance that, like you were saying before, with being inspired by something and, and, and finding those sounds or hunting endlessly for for the sake of hunting endlessly. Mm. Um, but you were talking about scenario one and two before, Mick. Yeah. Yeah, gas is such an interesting subject. Um, you know, I mean, I'm ter- I am terrible for it, of course. Well, um, all that work I've been doing on... Um, the psychology and philosophy stuff, mm. it, it puts gas into a really, really... You see gas for what it is. Yeah, right. You know, it's psychological time. It's, right. It's rejecting the current moment for a better future. You need a, you need a better acronym for gas than, psycho- than psychological time. Uh, and gear, the gear acquisition syndrome, you need a psychological acronym. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a rejection of your current reality for a future that is better, or that you imagine is going to be better. But after thirty years of being gripped by gas, I can tell you that it doesn't get any better. All that happens is you get more stuff, and you might find a, you know, jewel in that crown along the way a little bit. But actually, what you really want is to do what Frank Zappa said and just shut up and play the guitar. There you go. Because that is the, very good. That is the cure for everything. Said very good. Two idiots good. gassing on for two and a half hours talking about playing the guitar. You know what did John Lennon say? <laughs> Was it talking about music or writing about music is like dancing for soup or something? What was the quote? I don't know. Do you know that quote? No, I don't actually. Uh, maybe it was Paul McCartney. Um, here we go. Uh, You're searching internet memes. Oh no, it's not. It's not John Lennon. Um, it was me, Aunt Doris. She was a wise woman. Had great time. Um, somebody. Well, okay. They're they're attributing to uh, they're attributing it to Frank again. Okay. So somebody is saying it's Frank Zappa. Uh, writing about music is like dancing about architecture. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you have a better source for that quote, please let us know. Um, it's very good. Yeah, on the subject of quotes, Dan and I were... Uh, it's the Winston Churchill quote about democracy. Uh, I'm just going to make sure I get it right. Okay. For obvious reason, <laughs> indeed, it has been said that democracy is the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's great. I don't mean to make light of what's going on in the world at the moment, but sometimes you just got to look back to a fat, privileged guy who. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on. Carl Longbottom. Andrew Dibble oh, says, greetings from South Carolina. I recently picked up an AVRI 52 tally. It's great, but the intonation is tragic. Thoughts on compensated saddles. Um, 
Yep. Yes, Andrew, my uh, red has has titanium compensated saddles on it, and they're fantastic. Um, there are some some tunes that I had to play up the dusty end uh, in the cover band I was in, and without intonated saddles, it would be impossible, literally impossible, to do it. So um, there's a bunch of really good ones. Um, Mastery make a fantastic tally. Um, compensated saddle pieces um but yeah there's 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 a bunch of really good ones and there's titanium and brass and you know ad infinitum yeah depends but i do you, like them i think they do work quite well depends where you are in the world i thought seymour duncan might have made some at some time you know but oh all wow the big, okay all the, big hard, all the big hardware companies make them check out a company called schroeder guitar hardware s-c-h-r-o DR maybe Schroeder they're on Instagram they make absolutely beautiful hardware um, one would assume they do uh, a compensated saddle set um, it is difficult one intonation because if you are that person who can't touch the guitar until the strobe tuner says it's perfectly intonated you're always going to struggle with the telly compensated saddles or not yeah totally so um Think about that. Yeah, it. Uh, I mean, it just puts. It just helps a bit. Yeah. You know, it's never going to be perfect. The guitar is never going to be perfect. Yeah. It just helps a bit. I had somebody um, in the video on Friday. I, I think I made the comment that one of the surprising things about that Les Paul is that I can play it in tune. The gold top because I. And somebody said, "Well, the reason you can play it in tune is because it's intonated properly." And I had to respond and say, well, no, because I played lots of Les Pauls that are intonated properly. You know, I know how to, need, into, into, to intonate a guitar and I know plenty of guitar techs. Um, what I struggle with is the scale length of a Gibson guitar right. and my personal intonation because having played Fenders for my yeah. whole life, predominantly, I intonate in a certain way, which is why perfect intonation back here set by a machine on a Tom Anderson or whatever, on a perfectly made guitar, is always going to be out of tune for me because that's not how I play. So it, it's worth saying that intonation, while can be as perfect as it can be measured on a scope or you know a strobe tuner, doesn't necessarily work for every single guitar player because of your approach, yeah. the guitars you've played, um, blah, blah, blah. And of course, you could get it all perfectly intonated and then the nut's not cut right. Yeah. Quick question, are SG necks and Les Paul necks the same necks? No. Right. Cool. Change, change, um, SG necks changed significantly over the years. Um, they got wider. Okay. Maybe in 64. Right. Um, Good year, 64. And quite a lot of them. Like, remember that Derek Trucks one I had? Yep. That was like really wide, but it was super thin back to front. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. I mean, you could see why he would like it, being a slidey person. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I found that pretty tough to play. Um, I haven't played many SGs that have got that really lovely, like Les Paul kind of neck carve. Um, would you know? There's a vlog. Yeah, let's go and play totally. 20, twenty-five SGs. Uh, the real. The real Retox says I have a Marshall 100 watt and I just got a 1x12 Redback 150 watt. How likely am I to irk the neighbours? Happy New Year, lads. <laughs> yes, I'd say likely. Yes. Um, funny, I was talking to my brother today and he just played uh, an old 100 watt JCM 800 and he's got the 20 watt, the new reissue 20 watt version, oh, cool. which is great. But he's, he, he said he just went and played the 100 watt. He says he just has to have it. You know, there's nothing about, there's nothing, there's nothing like plugging into, no. you know, those 100 watt amps and giving it a little bit of love. It is, it's such an experience. It is. It's, uh, well, it's everything. Uh, yeah. Carl Longbottom. Hi, Carl. Hey, Carl. He says, uh, how are you, Kenny Dunn, and Mr. T? <laughs> He says, I've just watched the rewatched the episode with Michael from T-Rex. It got me gassing for a replicator junior. Um, is the big one worth the extra? Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong. 
hadn't they sorted out all the problems by the time the junior came out? Yes. So the the, yeah, yeah. the original one, cool as it was, had a few issues. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the, by the time they, um, they, you know, they sorted those out, and um, they were you could upgrade the the original. So they're all they're all sorted out. The the junior's wonderful. Um, is the big one worth it? Big one's very cool, but I I I know that if if, if it's just that core thing that floats your boat, then the junior's yeah. wicked. It's a, it's a real it's a very specific take on tape delay. So don't buy it thinking that it's going to be like an EP3 or a yeah a space echo. It's a very different experience. It's much more stylized. Um, really, really, really cool. Great fun. Uh, yeah. But it, it, the one thing it doesn't do is that big, clean, beautiful tape echo sound. Yeah. From memory. Yeah. And yeah. Carl, it's, by it's the way, very, it's very warm, um, but it's lovely, really lovely. The the blue uh, S type you sent is really, really interesting. I kind of don't want to know anything about it till I play it some more, but the resonance right. of that guitar is really interesting. I think it's made from something not exactly normal okay did you notice that um not really only because i don't play a lot of strats okay yeah it, but um, it really barks in a way that um oh wow none of my other s type guitars do i mean it's tuned to e flat which probably helps but um, yeah right i'm looking forward to giving that some stick excellent yeah uh, john jordan cheers from oak cliff hey. texas now i do believe oak cliff is where stevie ray vaughan came from Oh, wow. Did he? Maybe? I don't know. Um, thanks for introducing me to the Protein from Brown Amplification. It's easily my favourite pedal. Thanks for all the amazing content. Thank you, John. Wicked. Yeah, Protein's great. Yeah. Uh, la, 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 la. Thanks to both of you for years of advice, says Connor McCabe. Um, An inspiration. You've taken me from a Line 6 Spider to a burgeoning wet-dry wet rig. Oh, yes, we have done that one. We have done that yes, one. Apologies. that's great. Bad Less Letter says, Hi, guitar friends. Happy New Year. What the world needs right now is a Hammond Scanner vibrato in a pedal. Wow. I agree. Um, oh, Jack Dusbury says, Great shout out on Tiger Walk. Timeless. <laughs> hey, Jack. How you doing? Hope hey, well, gorgeous. Mate. Hope you're doing great, mate. Uh, yeah, Tiger Walk's a great record. Um, uh, Robin Ford... It's some of, I mean, obviously everything that Robin Ford has done has been really great. But for me, something connected with me with that record, it's, it's so dumbly. Some of his sounds are so dumbly. Mm. You know how, um, oh, someone will probably tell As me. As opposed to Tiger King, which is much less dumbly. <laughs> someone will probably tell me now he didn't use the dumble on that record. But um, if you think about the sound on Talk to Your Daughter, very compressed, overdriven, produced kind of sound. Yeah. The sounds on Tiger Walk are so much more open. Right. Um, wow. And just just sounds like somebody really feeling out a guitar and an amp. And um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, awesome. I need to check that out. Cheers, Jack. That's the one I was playing to you today. I was... Oh, no. I never knew, despite it being one of my favourite Robin Ford albums, and I, you know, very rarely read album liner notes. Discovered it's Steve Jordan on drums. Oh, wow. Who's and you pretty, love him. Who's my favourite drummer. Yeah, so yeah. It, yeah. Did you know that, Jack? Did you know it's Steve Jordan on drums? Anyway, Paul, uh, Philip... Paul Paceman says... Sorry, mate. Paul Paceman says, just wanted to let you know that I'm a dog lover, uh, as my bull terrier Aussie would hopefully attest, and that in 2021 I would not mind seeing a whole lot more of Rosie. <laughs> whole lot of Rosie, indeed. <laughs> yep. Yeah, she's ace. She is ace. Uh, she, um, yeah, as anyone who's had or got a puppy knows, the moments of joy are very much tempered with the moments of mind-numbing frustration. Um, but she is great. And uh, I'm, it sounds terrible to say it, you should never wish a time away. I'm looking forward to the puppy stage being over. Yeah. Because it is <laughs> it's hard work, man. A puppy stage is hard work. Uh, no question. Yeah, it is, is hard work. And I'm trying to be philosophical about it and say that, that it's for a reason and it's it's doing a couple of things, definitely taking my mind off COVID. There you go. It's providing a focus um, for something and using 
my brain in a different way, mm. uh, which I think is very valuable. So I know I'm going to look back on it and <laughs> be really happy that we did it. But man, like today, she was just glorious. She was just brilliant this morning. We did loads of, tr we did some training, went out for a nice long walk. Well, long for her, you know, given that she's a puppy, but, you know, as sort of as long as she's able to do. Um, did some really good training. And then she just, Satan just moved in. And everyone says, you know, oh, it's because she's tired. It's like, she's been sleeping for an hour and a half. She can't be that tired. And not doing anything. And then she started territorially pissing. Right. Which is, is that a Nirvana record? It's a song, isn't it? Is it the album? I know it's a song. Yeah. And, Territorial uh, pissing. So I need to, work, um, need to work that out. Yeah. John Elliott, thank you, mate. That's very kind. I can't see a question from you. Um, but John Newquist says, hi, guys. I'm writing to you from Petroluma Bay. Best wishes for my neighbours at Mesa. I hated harmonic tremor, so I stopped using it as a tremolo. Once I started using it as a phase shifter, wow, I guess mindset matters. Interesting. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, that was Pet Petaluma Bay, I think that was, Dan. Oh, okay, that would be it. That's that where, be it. That's where uh, Boogie is in uh, Northern California there. Two points for dyslexia. Philip, Philip Regina says, um, hey guys, have you ever tried XTS exact tone solution pedals? Exact tone solution? XTS? Yes, we've got, we've got a couple, haven't we? I don't know. It doesn't ring a bell with me, but... I thought I'd seen them. No. Maybe. No. Also, um, oh, this is a good question. Which OD and distortion pedal would you recommend for 80s and 90s Lukather Landau session lead tones? He says, is it a rat? My amp is a Victory V40D. It's so interesting. Rats, yeah, rats are good. Um, something like um, the Andy Timmons at plus is great yeah. for those, um, those sorts of things. It's interesting that you mentioned those, those two players. Because along with like a small handful of others, maybe Carlos Alomar and I'm sure there was a handful of others, but particularly Lukather and Landau are on so many records, big records from that period. Yeah. I was listening to a Suzanne Vega record just recently and I was like, that's, that's, that's got to be Landau. And lo and behold. Lo and behold, of course it is. Yeah, um, it is. I um, didn't know until recently that, that the solo in um, Running With The Night and Lionel Richie was Steve Lukather. And now it just seems so flippant obvious that it's Steve Lukather. Yeah. But it is, it's the most extraordinary guitar solo. Yeah. It is so perfect for the song. I'm just going and to check it just leaves you on such a high. He really, he really was and is amazing. But this, his recorded work, that he, um, his, his body of recorded work. Lukather. Yeah, man. Oh, um, it's just unbelievable. It must be, um, it must be, you know, pages long. His discography is. If you go yeah. go onto Wikipedia and look at Lukather's discography and Landau's discography, Michael Landau, Steve Lukather, and look at all the shit they've. Sorry, the stuff they've played on over the years. It's. I'm just checking. Uh, yeah, so. The track that I thought Luca had played on, which he, I think he did, um, Randy Crawford, You Might Need Somebody. Oh, yeah. Might need somebody. There's a, there's a, I can't exactly remember how to play it, but... Um, doo -doo 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 Yeah. It's all that it's a semitone bend that he often does. So one of the one of the ones he always does is like if you think about right. um Rosanna. Yeah. 
really difficult. So if you, I'm in B, right? Yep. It's a really difficult. You, you're building up there. But it, it's that. Sorry for playing it so badly, but it's. And I don't know what his fingering is or what key it's in, but it is so him, isn't it? It's so yeah, 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 quintessentially yeah. Lukather. Yeah, man. He's um. He really. His body of recorded work is just so astonishing. And it's funny, you know, I never really, there was some type of songs that I, I, I liked, but I never really got into them. I had some some friends that were massive Tato fans. Yeah. Um, I liked their their live, uh, there's some live videos of them going around, which I thought were, were brilliant. Um, but yeah, it was never a massive, I mean, that was obviously awesome. But yeah, when I listened to his, his recorded work, his session work, actually, um, Del Kasher told me an amazing story about getting Steve Lukather in the studio. And Steve was there working on it, you know, doing doing a tune in, in Del's studio. And um, Del says, okay, now now play Misty. And Steve says, okay, um, uh, you know, give me a key. How do you want it? And he start playing like six different versions of Misty so, you know, what, what What are you after? Del's like, oh, no, I just, you know, I just wanted to see that um, how awesome you are because he's so accomplished yeah. in every area. That's, you know, you can't, there's nothing you can't throw at the guy. He goes, okay, what, is, what exactly are you after? You know? He's, he's uh, been, incredible. He's been pretty vocal on that down the years about knowing your stuff and yeah. he's been quite critical of people who don't know their stuff. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Um, okay. Oh, um, the, the question was, what what pedal would you 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 use? Yeah, I would use I'd use an Andy Timmons uh, at yeah pedal. A lot of um, a lot of Lukath has recorded uh, great recorded guitar solo tones from that period were a Revera modded deluxe. Yeah, right. Um, or at least some of them were. Uh, yeah, just. It's just a sort of a fat, clear, you know, it's the kind of guitar sound that most of us want most of the time, isn't it? Just a really nice, fat, clear gain sound. Yeah. So... Just uh, out, out of interest, do you know the app that um, Eddie used when he did the Beat It solo? No, no idea. Okay. Um, but that was with Lukather as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, someone just messaged me, and I don't know. It says, Dan, Running With The Night solo was take one, and he was unaware that he was being recorded. Speaks volumes of the man. Wow. Yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah. Um, Landau's, one of Landau's favourite overdrive pedals is uh, the um, Maxon... SD9 Sonic Distortion. Oh, which hard. He, which hard he, pedal. Which he uses in a quite a specific way. Um, I mean, it's usually a fair bit of gain, fair bit of mid push, and a lot of volume. Yeah. And of course, don't forget that a lot of those uh, 80s and 90s recorded sounds were very, very produced. Yeah, absolutely of loaded with delay and reverb, which might not be immediately obvious, but I promise you, it's there. Yeah. So um, I think I think we're going to have to um, put a hold on super chats for yes. now, Mick. If okay. We... I didn't realize I didn't realize the time was, which is such a nice time we're here chatting. So please, no more super chats. Please, no more super chats. We shall smash through the ones that are left. Um, David Burke. I saw the Alder and Ash board on a show a couple of weeks ago. I was planning on a Schmidt array, but the Alder and Ash look great. Um, they're in the UK and they're cost effective. What are your thoughts, pros and cons of each? Alder and Ash are fantastic. Uh, they, yeah, if if that 
suits. That's brilliant. We've done a couple of Volvo dashboards. Did one for Chris Buck as well um, a little while ago. I prefer the lids on the um, Schmidt arrays. The Aldo dashboards, the lids are really cool. They're they're a bit chunky. Um, the Schmidt array lids are very light. Yeah, the Aldo um, dashboards are like a nice piece of cabinet making. Very exactly that. Really yeah. beautiful. Um, used with care, easy to transport, a little bit heavier than the Schmidt arrays because of the materials used and the mm. amount of materials used. So if it's, you know, for home and a bit of going around the place, then great. If you're moving around seriously a lot, there's nothing like the Schmidt array or a full flight case. Yeah. But the Schmidt array is really optimised for all of that. The, the, the use of space is second to none. So it is an efficient right. design. And all the stuff like the hinges, the fit and finish of it, everything that slots inside, it's really high engineering. Well, it is higher engineering. Older and Ash, beautiful, um, really nicely made. The wards they use, the craftsmanship is, is you yeah. know, yeah, amazing. Yeah. I'm trying to think of an analogy. It's like, uh, uh, I can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Daniel Webb says, hey, hey guys, just wanted to say Happy New Year and thank you. I've got a lot of new gear since joining your viewership, but I found myself content recently and focusing on playing. Peace and love. That's brilliant, Daniel. That's Absolutely awesome. brilliant. Corner1980 says, I hurt myself last week and I can't lift a guitar. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Blimey. Um, I'm waiting for surgery. Uh, I binged TPS all weekend to scratch the itch. I got my monk right before I got hurt. So the reward for recovery will be plugging that in. Thanks for your great work. Well, Cornyn, I hope it's not too, anything too crazy serious. If you need a surgery, then uh, sounds pretty serious. Boy, so oh boy. We wish you all the best with uh, with your recovery, mate. Yeah, boy. Yeah, mate. I hope, you, I hope you're feeling better. I had a mishap on the weekend. I did, Mick, I did the most stupid thing I've ever done. It's certainly in the top five. Um, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to eat garbage and I'm eating a lot of fruit, right? And so I'm just eating an apple and I've got this really sharp knife and I'm just, you know, cutting bits and pieces off the apple. For some reason, I can't quite work it out. I had the knife and I was, and I was, I thought if I put the core, if I shove the core, the, the knife into the core, then I can just take it out as one thing. Of course, I've got the core in this hand and the knife in this hand and I'm shoving it like this. Of course, the first thing that it just splits through the apple and I stab myself in the hand. <laughs> like it really went in. It didn't go through the back, but it really went in. And there was there was so much blood. Is it a spurter? I'm, 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 I'm with the kids and the wife in the lounge room and... And I'm trying to be cool. I didn't want anyone to think that I'd really hurt myself. And I'm like, I'm like um, Homer when he's got the when he's got the swear jar. Fiddle dee dee. That will require a tetanus injection. <laughs> Sorry, you shouldn't laugh, but it's you know, Darwin Award. Um, it's healed up seriously, man. Yeah, it, it's 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 healed up nicely, but far out. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. there you go. Hand injuries, and they freak me out. Hand oh, injuries. they totally freak. I, I don't want to get into like a, a, a cut off because all that will happen is something horrific will happen. But um, I'll just briefly, I sliced my thumb open once, and um, as I did that, I was in such shock. I was apparently holding it, going, um, "Okay, I, I think I need to go to A and E." And the the person who was sort of helping me goes, "Are you sure you're all right?" I said, "Yeah, I'm all right. I, I think I'm all right." And then she's like, well, um, I'm not sure you are because uh, apparently there was blood spurting out of it onto my face and I didn't even realise. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went white and kind of passed out and uh, they took me to A&E. <laughs> boy, oh boy. It's horrific. Right. It, these things are horrific. Um, sorry, we, we, are. I hope we have... Um, sorry, uh, boy, oh boy. Yeah, we're, we're um, horror storying um, and making light of it, which is just not a good idea. So no. uh, Gal Olgamoth... Gal Ogamoth says, hi guys, uh, I have a Broadcast Jewel, um, label maker DNM and a TS Mini. What drive sound is missing? 
Strat Telly into a Pro Junior standard blues rock aspirations. So broadcast jewel. Yep. Uh, a label maker DNM drive in a TS Mini. What drive sounds are missing? Um, something like uh, the uh, um, Gria light speed. Light speed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, That's so a really good one. Greer light speed is kind of different from all of those things in that it is just a sort of all of those things that you've got there. Um, actually, the DNM drive can do a lot, but they're they're quite character sounds all of them. Whereas the light speed is just a really great all round overdrive. Yeah. Which yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have a. a, a, a... The EQ curve in that would just work with whatever you plug it into. Yeah. Um, it's more natural, neutral. It's, yeah, I think that would be a nice addition. The, the broadcast can do tweedy things, but um, the tweed tends to have a bit more flub in the bottom end. Yeah. So a tweed kind of thing you might want to look at. Uh, yeah. Clon? Oh, I spoke to um to Jesse. Well, I been message Jesse Hoff today. And when we can, we're going to do that tweed episode. That'll be really great. Nice. Um, right, Brett, this is... Sorry, have we finished that one? Not really. A clone. Okay. Keep and you haven't clone. got any fuzzes. So you need a fuzz. There you go. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Very good. Yeah, very good. Brett Porter says, Bad mental state gives me something to write about but kills the motivation. Any idea how to overcome this, to have something to say when the moods are up? What a flippin' great question. Yeah, fantastic question. Um, you you certainly won't be the only artist uh, through history who has struggled with that particular problem. Yeah, I, I think. Okay, so so the when you're you know when you're uh, when you're into dancing with the darkness and you're in that state, motivation is is almost impossible. When the motivation is up, just having the experience of being in that mental state is enough. Yeah, it certainly is enough for me, um, because I then have the energy to write about yeah that stuff. Then, so um, yeah, all I would say is um, when the energy is up and you're feeling inspired, uh, yeah, to, um, don't be afraid to uh, express or or even just put yourself. Uh, remember what it's like if, if, you know, if they're the sort of the lyrical content or the musical content you want to do is reflect that state. All you need to do is, is remember it. You don't need to be in that state for that to come out. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, when we did the comfort zone challenge, for example, there's mm. no way I'd have been able to do that if I was in a down situation. Would just physically wouldn't have been able to do it. But I was completely fine and I was drawing on the experience of being in that down situation. There is another really positive knock-on that is possible from doing this in that by looking at your unhappier self, uh, you're able to kind of see it a little more clearly and you can see it for what it is rather than being in the centre of it where it's impossible to understand. So it, it, there can be a you know a healing process in doing that as well. So... Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, inspiration in general, you, 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 it's hard to just pluck it out the air, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, at least you've got to be aware, you've got to be ready for when it flies past you so you can pluck it out the air. <laughs> yep, totally, totally. <laughs> um, um, Animal Sounds says, Oi, mates, you two have taught me everything I know about pedals, so thank you. Is miking an amp into a digital audio workstation with a live EQ band open a good technique for adjusting your pedals in a live setting? Uh, with a live EQ band open. Uh, I... I'm not really sure what that means. Don't know what you mean. Is... Is miking an amp into a door with a live EQ band open a good technique for adjusting your pedals and tone for a live setting? Are you saying that you're so you're going to record your guitar and then you've got an EQ where you can kind of manipulate to hear what's cutting and what's not? Is it is it that? Um, in any case, no, I don't think it is. 
um, it'll certainly help you get an idea about because obviously the, the physical experience of sat there playing is fundamentally different than not playing and listening but everything changes with volume yeah like everything changes with volume so yeah the only the only way to do it really is to be with the band and and do that mm-hmm. yeah yeah sorry we can't be uh, helpful, yeah yeah, yeah. Helpful totally that. Uh, right. Tom Bromby, sorry, Tom Bromby says, Dan, can a stereo loop on G3 be used like a wetter box to blend in a dry signal with, say, a flanger, for example? Keep on going, lads. Love from Wales. Um, Tom, you can split on G3, you can put uh, a loop in parallel um, with another loop um, or just in parallel so that uh, with, with your dry signal, it's not, you can't adjust the blend. Um, but you can put it in parallel if you want to. If you want to do blend things on the fly um, with an expression pedal, um, then yeah, Wetterbox is the way to go. And John Elliott says, "Thanks for everything you do. Waiting for my jam Ripley Fall and Echoplex delay to arrive to finish the latest pedal board. You guys cost me a fortune, but in a good wa- uh, in a good way. Yeah, wicked. Yeah, there's some fun in there. Echoplex sure. delay is, is a corker. Yeah. Um, Tom Hurrell. Tom Hurrell. Uh, so, hi guys, I have a basic tone question. If Dan's telly is quite middly, why pair it with an AC30? If mix strat is mid light, why use a Fender style amp? Shouldn't you guys just swap? Thanks. Great question. It's interesting. My my AC30, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course it's got mids. It's an AC30, but there's, it just, it sits in the, all the right places that amp, and yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, yeah, I I, I would love. I love the sound of my AC30 into Mix 2 Rock, but I saw, yeah, my, my telly plugged into Mix 2 Rock. But for me, the the telly in the AC30 is a magic, magic thing. Yeah, I think, you know, this is where we all have to be careful with language because when we say mid, what do we mean by mid? You know, mid really could be anything from 250 hertz to 3.2k yeah Yeah. which is such a massive vast you know like if you think about boxy woofy kind of mid that's what three four hundred hertz if you think about where a tube screamer adds its girth that's somewhere between five and seven hundred hertz depending on a tube screamer yeah think about where a clon adds its mid push that's 1k and if you think about Mm -hmm. upper mid frequencies you know, you're sort of knocking on the door of treble. Is it is 2.5k treble or is it mid? Yeah, right. So, for a start, the terms we use are, are not very helpful when we say mid-range because it's this colossal band of frequencies. Secondly, inherent in your question is an assumption that a balanced frequency response is what you want. Yes. And it just isn't. Um, what you want is not a balanced frequency response at all because you want less bass you want enough mid and you want plenty of treble so mm. it's it's these particular combinations for sure a strat into a fender amp gives you or at least the blackface amp can give you that mid scoopy sound which of course mm. is such a critical part of of fender history step on a tube screamer which fills that mid hole back in that's a whole other part of yeah. An important fender yeah. history so um yeah strat into an ac30 i like it but i it, yeah it just i can't make it work in the way that so many great strat and ac30 players down the years have done for me mm. I, I just I've grown up doing it a different way it's a really yeah. interesting question and it sort of it knocks on the door of a of a show we should really do on frequency Okay. And of course, what you hear here is not what that person 20 metres away or 10 metres away hears because the way the different frequencies travel and the way the room is shaped. So, yeah, it's um, endlessly fascinating. On the subject of which, Derek Barillet says, or Barillet, depending on where you're from, says, when playing live or for a recording session, do you work your tone to fit in a mix or just on its own let the mixer 
or producer worry about how it fits in the mix? Well, so one of the, my favourite things we used to do, Mick and I used to do a, a gig um, every couple of months down at um, the cheese, cheese and Grain? Yeah. Yeah, at, in Froome. And the only thing going through the front of the house was the vocals and maybe a tiny little bit of kick drum. But apart from that, everything else is mixed on stage. And setting up your tone to work in a in a live environment where you don't need anything else. I mean, all my all my favorite bands I've gone to see have had the most amazing on stage sound. Yeah, you know that I I know there are practical reasons that people don't do it now. Um, but I I remember that um, uh, Phil X was saying that he when he went to Bon Jovi and the stage is silent. Yeah nothing yeah and you know it's really hard whereas when we went to see the drills and just the sound coming off stage was yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. magic yeah. um i yeah so for me it's definitely get everything standing right on stage and then what happens is that the sound guy doesn't have to work so hard yeah i you know the most important thing it, it depends on your view because there's so many comments that we'll get in the show and elsewhere in sort of general guitar land that says well no one out front cares anyway so don't worry about it which is just it's just complete anathema to me that anyone any guitar player could ever think like that yeah people do um the most important thing somebody might argue is that the audience enjoys the show i w i think i'd pretty much agree with that mm -hmm. um the audience aren't going to enjoy the show if you're desperately unhappy with your guitar sound and it's it's making you play badly. But you should yes. be professional and you should play exactly the right notes no matter what your guitar sound. Yeah, okay, Dad. Um, actually, my dad would never say that, but okay, Uncle Dave. Uh, fine. What we know is that artists connect with the moment, right, and, and their experience of that moment. The sound is a huge part of it. So I would argue that actually the most important thing of all is that you're happy. Yeah. Uh, but that you're happy in the consideration of your bandmates and, you know, the, the the environment you're playing in. You can't just turn up with two dumbbells and say, well, I'm happy, screw you lot. That's not really, that doesn't really work. Um, unless you're... <coughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, so I think you've got to be, you've got to be happy with your sound and then you let the sound person if you're lucky enough to have one deal with it and of course if you're recording the mix engineer and the producer is going to do what the hell they want anyway yep totally they're gonna they're gonna take your guitar sound take it to pieces radically eq it compress it add all kinds of effects you don't want and um that's just how mixing and production works yep so um yeah i would say be happy beautiful michael swisher says thank you for inspiring me and I play an acoustic or a telly with Freyland pickups through a Katana Mark II 100, mostly clean. I'm 70, by the way. A good quote. Critics write about art. Painters talk about turpentine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really good. Yeah, I, I, have, I, I try not to carry any guilt because it, it's useless, doesn't do you any good. But um, in, my, in my less conscious moments, I do regret some of those years spent on guitar magazines writing about music. I hated album reviews, absolutely hated them with a passion, tried to ban them from the magazine. Right, wow. I just... What does some journalist know? Yeah, yeah. About the creative process. All they're doing is putting their projection on what they wanted that artist to do. Yeah, right. It's cobblers, anyway. Very interesting. <laughs> um, Chris Parsons says, I, I bribed that was a felonious monk quote i bribe I'm not sure what that means chris um but i will keep looking for your comments so sonius thelonious monk comment in there somewhere uh, tom hurrell again he says me again i'm interested in the tomato tone but possibly only for three or four easy access sounds not the zillions it has is it silly to get one are there other products that would do that it's a really good question um 
I guess I can only answer from my point of view, from experience, in saying that apart from the many dual overdrives that I have, I would never use a multifunction <laughs> uh, pedal for anything, just because it's always a compromise. It is always mm. a compromise. Um, and the only time I would is where, like, for, for example, like the Collider Delay and Reverb, where I don't have single sound options for that. And I actually think once you're into that world, it, it sounds great. But if you're talking about, can I replace this multi-overdrive unit for my clon my tube screamer and this it's tough it is tough and the only the only pedal that i've seen that comes anywhere close is the automaton yeah agreed uh, um but Actually, the, 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 the um with... electron analog drive was pretty good it was really good yeah it was pretty good don't forget you can't stack sounds in that no so you know i've got the um, preamp on my board, but I've still got, I've still got my travel booster. I've still got my page. You know, I, I it doesn't, I can't do it all because I still need those stacking tones. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it depends what your three to four easy access sounds. If they're like a yeah, nice sure. tube screen, there that's two hundred quid. If it's a cl decent clon type, there's probably two hundred quid at least. And if it's a proper clon, a lot more than that. So you could be up to, you know, nearly a thousand quid with some nice pedals there anyway. Plus, you've got four right. pedals, four power supplies, loads of patch leads and all that, tomato tone, one lead in and out, or, you know, one in, one out, one power supply and, and very efficient use of pedal board real estate. So from a practical level, it's probably worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Music um, Therapy Laz says, I'm thinking about getting the G3 Atom. How can I get both of you to sign the top? <laughs> it's a must-have for my future pedal board build. Oh, bless you, mate. Um... Uh, yeah, look, send us an email. We can sort something out. I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can. Yeah. Um, Drew A says, do you recommend getting fret dresses in between refrets? By the way, we don't deserve TPS. Thank you for all you do. Yes, you um, do. So, yes, Drew. So I learned a long, a long time ago how to crown a fret, and I will do it. Like between changing strings, I always try to clean the frets. I have an issue. As soon as the fret goes really flat on the top yeah. and starts to drag and grate, I really struggle with that. But it doesn't take a lot to simply get some um, tape the fingerboard down, get some really high-level wet dry and just, or, or just with a corky finger, just go over the frets. Even with a bit of steel wool, like, yeah. you know, triple zero, zero grade steel wool, and just to give the frets a rub, but it just takes those edges off. And when and it's the most beautiful thing when you put fresh strings on and you've cleaned the frets. It's the most magic thing. And I'll try and do that as often as I can. Um, I don't know. I'm getting I'm getting my vintage tally refretted. Um, but I've been yeah constantly cleaning the frets and doing that. And I, I gave it one really good fret dress. Um, beforehand that's settled a, a lot of the things out um but yeah you shouldn't need to do too many fret dresses between refrets but yeah i mean you, you know you might need to do a couple you might need to do if you're using a lot you might need to do one a year yeah don't ask me about that stuff i'm shocking with guitar upkeep and maintenance my guitars are all in a shocking state all the time so yeah if this is an interesting one for you, Mix. Andrew Davies says, Mick, on your 58335, has any of the lacquer cracked around the fret wire on the side of the neck? Um, it has on my one. Thanks for the lengths you guys go to to keep these shows going at these times. P.S. Love the Monk. Thanks, Andrew. Um, um, I don't believe so. I know it's a real common problem on many Gibsons. It's a particular problem if there's binding um, because uh, the binding can shrink and expand and... All that. So, have I got any lack of cracks where the frets join the fingerboard? No. Um, although I have got a bit of protruding fret issue there, which means it might be a bit dry in here. Um, no, it's not too bad actually. I mean, I've seen some horrific nitrocellulose issues over the years. Mm. Sadly, um, many with Gibson on the headstock. 
I mean, it's an occupational hazard of working with, with nitro because it's so temperature sensitive. Yeah. No, I haven't. It's been pretty good, actually, this guitar. Um, not too many issues. I was thinking of, of checking it myself, but it never looks right. Really? Yeah, have you ever seen that done with hair dryer and a can of compressed air? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it never it never looks quite right, to be honest. No. But, um, yeah, no, it's it's, uh, it's pretty decent, the finish on this guitar, actually. Yeah, it's lovely. So I'm, I'm sorry to hear that you're having those issues. Um, if mm. it is around the fret ends, the ends of the frets themselves, it might be that the guitar is a bit dry and the fingerboard is shrinking a bit, which is popping the ends of the frets out. Mm. So a little bit of, um, f you know, rosewood fretboard conditioner of your choice, be that um, lemon oil or whatever it is you want to use. A lot of people say don't use lemon oil, but... Yeah. Derek Wyman says, I just put some proper wide range humbuckers in my tally and they sound ace, but the neck pickup has a ton of extended low end that I would like to tame. Oh. Any suggestions? I'm running 500k pots. Yeah, so the, my favourite trick, and I'm going to do a, a show on this, is actually putting a capacitor in series with the neck pickup. And so if you think of think of the capacitor as a uh, like a, a high pass filter. And depending on the value of the capacitor, the higher you go up in value of the capacitor, the more the low frequencies it'll let through. And you'll find the spot where it just shelves off the bottom end and just only lets the the other frequencies go through. It's an old trick that I saw on a, um, a Rickenbacker, an old 60s Rickenbacker that I thought sounded fantastic. And it is, it is an issue with some neck pickups, especially humbuckers. So that's um, finding the right value for that uh, is an easy mod. I'm, I'm actually thinking of doing a little video on really simple passive mods that you can do to the electronics in the guitar to get some different things out of it. Um, yeah, and that's definitely a favourite one of mine. Cool. Uh, oh, God, we are miles behind. And there's, qu there's quite a lot of normal questions I wouldn't mind answering as well. Matteo N says, do you have tinnitus after playing that loud? Do you use ear protection? Um, no and no. Dan? No, I'm good. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I've, so I've got, I went to get some musician's earplugs and my ear canals are so small they don't, they don't fit. And so apparently my ear canals have saved my hearing because they're so small um, that they, apparently the sound pressure, it compresses a lot, you know, before it does any damage. So I've been really fortunate. Um Ian, Ed, Ian M says, just to add, Crazy Rosie, m m maybe Bored Rosie. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally get it. Uh, there are millions of people who own dogs, right? And I know that those people don't spend 24 hours a day with their dog. So she gets a lot of our attention. She gets a lot of you know, one-to-one -one and training and we then mm. give her things that occupy her mind. We do scenting work. Um, so she gets a lot. What I'm worried about is that she's getting so much that in the times when she just needs to be on her own, she's expecting us to be with her. But yes, boredom, sure, because Spaniels are well known for it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah Soren thank Levin. Oh, thanks, Soren. That's, um, that's very generous, mate. He says... Thanks for reminding us of these great memories coming. Lockdown love from Copenhagen. And John Nichols says, thanks for all you do. Thank you, John. That's really kind, mate. Um, Perty Uppala says, is it Dan who is always remote if one of you is? Um, yes, the reason for that is Dan lives quite a long way from the studio and I live very close to it. So um, in the interests of minimising our uh, travelling, it makes sense. Not just in COVID times, but just in general. But yeah. Yes, and Meek knows how to drive the studio. Oh yes. Oh, that's the other thing. I know how to drive the studio. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, My secret machine says, Mick, are you into watches like our friend Mr. Mayor? What watch are you wearing now? Okay, I get asked this so much, 
Um, I am into watches, but I can't afford watches. Uh, so this watch is a... Citizen. Can't really see it because the light's not on it very well. Grand Touring. Uh, there's a better shot of it in the uh, board vlog. You can't really see because the light's not very good. Um, it is uh, auto focus. Dan, can you look at the screen a sec? Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's a Citizen Grand Touring something or other. It looks a bit like a Panerai, but it isn't a Panerai. Um, if I could afford a Panerai, I would have more vintage strats. But I do love watches, yeah. <laughs> I really do love watches. But all my money goes, whatever money I've got goes on guitars. Um, okay, right. Any recommendations for a dual P90 guitar? I have a good Strat and Tele for my main sound, just looking for something a bit different, says Matthew Ingalinera. Um, if you can find a nice SG Special, um, they're really good. Um, a, a Firebird, the, P, the P90 Firebird is incredible. Yep. Um, any... There's plenty of Les Pauls out there with P90s. Yeah. Uh, a Double Cut Junior. Two P90s. Casino. Casino's a fantastic Casino. P90 guitar. There you go. Or the th a 330. Yeah. Well, same thing. Which yeah. is a casino, right? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Same thing. There you go. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you fancy something hollow which would be very, very different from your Stratton Telly, then a casino would be a great shout, actually. Failing that, um, as Dan says, SG Special, I think would be a, would be a great shout, too. Uh, Doug Strong. Um, how do you separate mental health issues like anxiety and depression when guitar has been an outlet, but growth plateaus are subtly problematic? Um... Trying to understand that question, Doug. Uh, do you understand the question, Dan? I think is what you're saying that you're frustrated by growth plateaus. Yes. Um, and when you're using playing an instrument to help with mental health issues. P perfect. Um, yeah. So I get that. Now, now, what I'm I found that you know, for the majority of my playing career, I, I so I studied music, and then I kind of had all the stuff that I needed just to do to crack on. When I stopped gigging so much, I really wanted to learn more about jazz, and what I found is that that constant um, having a discipline about it, and and, and it's, I find that really hard because then you're relying on motivation to do it. But having some sort of discipline and some sort of goal, little goals along the way, um, and, it's just, and it might just be to learn the cause of a piece or to be able to, um, you know, improvise over a couple of changes. Or, you know, one thing for me was learning how to improvise over altered chords. I'm just finding out the scales and tones that I need to be able to do that, and just having little goals along the way. Don't don't look for the massive step change in your playing. Just just tiny wins is all you need, and that I find that keeps me motivated. And then I'll be able to look back over the past year or whatever and see uh, an improvement in what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah, so so look for the little wins and keep self motivated. Yeah. But it is it is a wonderful thing to do um, to help with those sort of you know those mental health things. Yeah, I couldn't agree that more. Is for me. I couldn't agree more. One of the one of the worst things you can do to yourself is be constantly looking into the future at where you're going to get to. 
um, you know, I want to be able to achieve this level of playing or I don't know, yeah. I want to earn this much money or, you know, sure, have goals, but don't be living in kind of the future. Don't be living in hope the whole time. Just if you if you feel like that, if you feel like the growth plateau is is you're just not getting anywhere. Dan is absolutely right. Just focus right now on these next three notes and try yeah, as so hard as you possibly can. Every time you start thinking about, well, I'm not getting there, I'm not getting there, just turn around and look at yourself and go, what are you talking about? Why am I, why am I bothering about the fact that I'm not getting there? The most important thing is this next step I'm taking. Yeah. Just try and enjoy that. that. And if, you, if you're finding something difficult, play something less, less difficult for half an hour. Play along to your favourite yeah. song. Do something, yeah. you know, just break it and try not to always be focused on on the the destination. This sounds like a terrible cliche, but don't don't be focused on the destination. Be focused on the journey. It's much yeah. more interesting. It's much more interesting. And as he said, if you do that, you'll be surprised how far you go. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Good luck, Doug. Wish you well with yeah. it. Just, um, and just a little reminder, no more Super Chats, guys. We're getting to the end now. But Jim Hardy is coming. And thanks you, Jim. That's very generous. He says, TPS gang, I was lucky enough to get a humdinger for Christmas and so broke my wet, dry cherry with my Victory V40 low-power mode and my 1.5-watt home-built Princeton type. It's inspiring, and I can't wait to try it with my V40 and my 50-watt Plexi Loud. That's awesome, Jim. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. It's life-changing. first do the wet, dry thing, it is a revelation. Uh, Max Shade Seven says, "Hey guys, what patch cables do you use, and what do you recommend?" Um, well, we use uh, we use the Eventide Audio SIS uh, for the solderless stuff, um, the square plugs, and um, there's there's a bunch of different cables that you can use for the soldered things. Um, yeah, that's what I use. Yeah, Evidence Audio SIS is what we tend to use um yeah yeah uh daniel well we've had that uh, <laughs> sorry i'm just trying to go through these uh do we might be nearly there, Dan? I think. Yeah. Um, I do believe we are there. Great. We are. Great. Happy days. All right. Um, BV Ninja says, if you're on a plateau, record your practice. Record yourself practicing. Listen back to it. It's a huge motivator for growth, says BV Ninja. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Yep. Very good, BV. I don't want to hear myself playing the guitar, but... <laughs> no, it's a great, great suggestion. Um, which cues us to say, once again, BV, thank you so much for moderating. Yes, mate. And, Absolute legend. And being in there. Superstar. James McClure. Let's 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 leave this on James McClure, who offers some wisdom and a rhyme in beautiful simplicity. Do your best and forget the rest. Yeah, man. Boom. Nice one. Perfect. Thanks, James. Do that. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we hope you have a fantastic week. Uh, we're still working on Friday's show. What are we doing? We're doing our um, resolutions for Friday. I think we're going to do, yes. Uh, why it's a really bad idea to make resolutions, I think, is the... Uh... Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, yes, massive thank you for watching. Um, don't forget, uh, if you're... Uh, we have our TPS merch store, so that thatpedalshowstore.com, where you can get all your hats and your um, T-shirts and strings and pedals and... Uh, hoodies, uh, cups, man, it's turning into waitros of, of uh, guitar gear. It's wonderful. Uh, also, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers um, and a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. 
there we go. Have a great week. It is awesome. Dan, I want to leave you with something. Indeed. And, and all of you out there as an option for alternative picking. Alternate picking. Okay. Okay. I was watching, I'm, I'm so, gassing so hard for a Collings 290 at the moment. I watched a video uh, of uh, a friend of mine called Stuart Ryan doing a demo on the North American Guitar Channel. And he plays this really lovely Eric Johnson um, type alternate picking. And I was analysing his right hand, trying to understand what he was doing. Right. I'm going to approach the camera. And this is something for you all to practice, seeing as something practical would be useful, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be good if those goons gave us something to practical to do? <laughs> so here we go. I'm we going to approach the goons of the guitar world. Uh, I'm going to turn the microphone around so it's pointed at me. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear my voice. And I'll see if the camera will focus on me. So here we go, right? I'm going to play uh, this scale, which I think is kind of a minor. Yep. Yeah, it's D, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's straight D minor, but anyway, those are the notes I'm going to play. Now look at my right hand. I'm going to try and do this. One way to do it, right, is to just go up and down with your hand like this. Yeah. When I watched Stuart, he wasn't going up and down with his hand at all. He was keeping his hand kind of similar, but moving his... He was kind of moving his like this. So is it a wrist action or is it a... And if you watch the video, it's mad. His thumb does that with each note. Dave Gregory does the same thing. That thing. Yeah. Yeah. I found it, I found it completely fascinating. Because... Here you go. If I try and go... If I try and do the up and down E, I just can't get the speed and the precision. If you play it in an EJ way. Yeah. Whereas if you go, it, it just sort of feels like it might be more efficient, but I can't make my thumb do it. Yeah. That thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is, you're not using that whole muscle, you're just isolating it using that. And then you're just using the muscle to, to move backwards and forwards out of the strings as location. It's The tricky thing is, if you're doing something groovy and you are using your hand for rhythm, you know, and yeah. then go to try to break that, you know, into that thumb thing, I find that challenging. Yeah, it's tough. Anyway, it's something that I've decided I'm going to try and work on. Alternate cool. picking. Bonamassa does it brilliantly. Eric Johnson does it brilliantly. It's where you get that really slick pentatonic, beautiful, you know. <laughs> we know you shouldn't try and play fast because it's not, not clever, right? But it is good fun. Excellent. All right, everyone. Have a fantastic week. And... Um... Uh, join us for the show on Friday, and then we'll see you next Monday. Okay. Cheerio, baby. Bye, everyone. Be good. Goodbye. Bye.